49 Wings of Sorrow, standing alone in the middle of her room Alice slowly fell to her knees trying to process everything. She realized none of it was a dream. She was wide awake, she came face to face with two gods and learned she might actually be a demigod and that she may not have to kill anyone. At the same time she struggled deeply with the thought that her parents that she remembered so clearly may just be someone else's memories implanted in her head so she would take revenge for her father quest, meet with NYX and find out more about who you really are. Reward? Backslash, backslash backslash why would I be given this quest? Backslash seeing the system's quest pop up after so long it brought even more questions. Backslash just what is this system? God clearly does not like NYX. Why would he tell me to go see and speak with her? Maybe the system is actually NYX's creation backslash backslash fuck it I need answers. Alice said to herself before going back into the shadows with the room NYX took her to in mind. Appearing in the room just as fast as she submerged herself into the shadow cast in her room she was met with NYX facing away from her destroying a table in the corner in a fit of anger backslash, should I leave, backslash Alice asked, taking a step back backslash no, sorry I was just venting some anger. I didn't think you would come to see me so quickly I am really happy you came please take a seat. Backslash NYX said composing herself and sitting on the chair pretending nothing happened. Backslash I have a lot of questions. You seem like the only option for answers to be honest. Backslash Alice said hating herself for doubting who her real parents are backslash I can read the first question. You have it written all over your face so I will just start from the beginning so please listen carefully. Around 50 years ago the demon race wiped out Sauron's precious creations, the angels. Sauron was furious but knew he could not directly retaliate against another god's creations so he reincarnated two of the most powerful of the angels that once worshipped him. He gave them the same task that he gave you, eradicate the demon race and he will allow them to bring back the angel race as a whole. Believing his words without question the two angels set off to the demon kingdom and wreaked havoc. However two angels alone are far from powerful enough to wipe out the whole demonic race and thus they were defeated a day into their quest. Backslash NYX seemed to say in one breath. Backslash so God's real name is Sauron? Backslash Alice asked, getting sucked into the story NYX was telling backslash indeed, while this was happening Sauron and I would regularly meet and pass the time. As immortals who have lived since the beginning of time we sometimes pass the time in the ways of humans and other creatures. We could have never known that a child would come from our actions. A child born between two gods has not happened in a eon such occasions would normally be celebrated. Sauron however had his power drained constantly while I was pregnant. It is so rare for gods to have children together that neither of us could have guessed that you would put a drain on his power for such a long time. As soon as you were born you did not cry instead you used my power and vanished from our grasps. Fearful that someone would take you and use you against him, Sauron implanted a young angel's memories in your head. The young woman by the name of Alice did indeed exist at one point in time but that is not who you are. Backslash NYX said trying to hide the fact she was nervous Alice would just leave hearing all of this backslash that is just too much for me to handle, if I was really the child between you two why do I not have godly powers? And what about the quests I am given by God, the ones that just appear in front of me? There is so much that does not make sense about what you're telling me, backslash Alice said, still not having any answers backslash I don't know why you don't have the power you should have, as for your father's quest to wipe out the demons I can tell you that doing that will not bring back the angels backslash NYX replied honestly backslash can you give me quests as well? The reason I came here so quickly was not to see you but because I was given a quest to come and talk with you, I even will get some reward for this visit, are you the one who gives me the rewards? Even my scythe was a reward the quests gave me, backslash Alice said losing control of her emotions, feeling like she was just a tool for the gods to use and play mind games with backslash I have no idea what you're talking about Alice I can promise you that, Sauron may just be using the quests to mess with you and prevent us from having a good relationship, backslash NYX replied not knowing what else to say quest complete reward, wings of sorrow having completed the quest Alice stood up feeling sick of all the stress and mental abuse she was feeling. Suddenly time felt as if it was slowing down as wave after wave of magic power erupted around her. Screaming in pain beautiful black wings tore through her skin and expanded sending blood and a black mist swirling around her. Watching in utter shock at what was happening in front of her NYX stared at Alice's beautiful black wings as they slowly moved closer to Alice's body. Crying and curling her knees to her chest she let all of her pent up emotions come out as if second nature to her Alice hid her body behind her wings as she sat on the ground not wanting to face reality anymore backslash Alice, are you okay? 
These wings are not from Sauron I can promise you that whatever quests you are receiving are not from him nor me. Backslash NYX said, putting a hand on her wings causing her to feel intense emotions of sadness. Backslash you poor child. I can feel how much pain you're in. I will free you from your father if that is what you wish. Backslash NYX said, trying to be as genuine as she could backslash neither of you are my parents I know who they are leave me alone. Backslash Alice said, flapping her wings hard and leaving the room returning to her own falling onto the familiar and warm floor she felt like she had not seen in a long time backslash Alice, is that you? Backslash Yumi said standing in her doorway in awe of what she was seeing. Looking up in tears Alice got up rushing over to Yumi embracing her in a tight hug as if she was the only real thing in her life that she would refuse to let go of. Wrapping her arms around Alice she returned the hug and let Alice cry on her shoulder as she just played with her hair. Backslash I don't know what happened to you since I was asleep but I am here and not going anywhere so cry as much as you need to then we can talk. Backslash Yumi said. Wondering just how long she was asleep. Having cried so much, no more tears would come. Alice let go of Yumi and took a few steps back. Backslash, I missed you. Backslash, Alice said, wiping her eyes. Backslash, how long was I asleep? When did you get your wings back? Backslash, Yumi asked, not being able to help herself from asking questions. Backslash, I don't know how long and a few minutes ago. Backslash, Alice replied, taking the chance to finally be able to look at her own wings. Backslash, these are my wings. Backslash Alice asked, touching the silky smooth feathers that looked nothing like the white ones she remembered having as an angel. Backslash looks like it. Honestly they're the most beautiful things I have ever seen. It is going to bring a lot of attention to you next time you go outside. Backslash Yumi said, making a good point backslash that is true. Alice said, bringing up her quest panel to look at her wings information wings of sorrow, living through life and death the wings of sorrow will reflect the owner's emotions. Wings of Sorrow will allow the user to fly freely through the sky with no use of mana. Bringing the wings out used 35 mana, storing the wings returns 35 mana. 50 Janet the Storm Magnus. Backslash I can store my wings away it seems. Backslash Alice said curious just what it meant by being able to store them. Thinking of putting her wings away they slowly faded away into a black mist until they were completely gone backslash that is a pretty crazy skill. Anyways I need to rest today I don't seem to heal as fast as you do unfortunately. Have you seen little shadow? I was hoping to cuddle him since I can't leave the house yet. Backslash Yumi asked while looking around Alice's room backslash now that you mention it I have not seen much of him lately, I wonder where he has been. Backslash Alice said while sending a signal to him to let him know she wanted him to return. Taking Alice and Yumi both by surprise little shadow leaped out of Alice's shadow looking up at the both of them as if it was nothing strange. Backslash where have you been? How can you come out of my shadow like that? Backslash Alice asked curiously since we have a blood tie to each other I was able to take on some of your power as I leveled up. I am close to your current level at the moment. Shadow said while flicking his tail a few times obviously proud of himself. Backslash what else can you do? Backslash Alice asked wanting to know more I can use your shadow movements as well as a few new attacks. He replied not noticing Yumi sneaking up behind him backslash it's not fair that you can talk to Alice and not me, you have to cuddle me to make up for it, backslash Yumi said carrying him off to her room. Deciding to get some fresh air Alice made her way out of the estate. As she walked through the streets she was able to notice a large presence of soldiers and high level adventures crowding everywhere she could see. Not watching where she was going Alice bumped into a beautiful brown skinned woman dressed in leather backslash I am so sorry I was not paying attention to where I was going. Backslash Alice said noticing the woman had a streak of silver in her dark hair that fell over her face backslash no worries just watch where you are going there is a lot of tension right now so others may not be so kind. Backslash the woman said with a smile backslash what is going on anyways? Backslash Alice asked curiously backslash the kingdom is preparing for war with the neighboring kingdom. My name is Janat, who might you be? Backslash Janat asked curious if Alice was also an adventure taking part in the upcoming war backslash my name is Alice, it is nice to meet you. You are here to fight on our side in the war? Backslash Alice asked using her eyes ability to check Janat's level Janat the Storm Magnus, level 78 backslash I am indeed how about you? You give off a thick magical aura so I assume you're a mage like me. Backslash Janat said happily to meet another mage around her age backslash I use a scythe as well as a few different elements. Backslash Alice replied pulling her weapon out of the system's inventory backslash you can use dimensional storage. Backslash Janet said more surprised at Alice's ability to store things than her menacing looking weapon. Backslash man I was born able to use it. Backslash Alice said backslash so what about your elements? 
What all can you use? Backslash Janat asks genuinely curious now. Backslash fire, wind, and shadow. I mainly use my side that I can combine with my elements when I battle. Backslash Alice replied expecting a big reaction but was kind of upset when Janet just smiled like it was a normal thing. Backslash what about you Janet? Backslash backslash technically I use the wind and light elements but I am known as the Storm Magnus since I can use large scale spells. Lots of them involve lighting and tornadoes pretty cool don't you think? Backslash Janet said proudly, also feeling a little upset by Alice's lack of astonishment by her abilities backslash so are you taking part in the war Alice? Backslash Janet asked pushing through the awkward tension between them backslash I plan to level up a few more times before it starts that way I can be of more help. Backslash Alice said honestly while wanting to go back out to train some more backslash mind if I tag along? Backslash Janet asked having some time to kill anyways backslash I am only level 25 currently so having you tag along would probably scare away the monsters I plan on killing. Sorry maybe next time. Backslash Alice replied wanting to be alone while she vents some of her pain and anger as well as not wanting anyone to see her flying around just yet. Saying her goodbyes to Janet she quickly made her way through the crowded streets and out of the kingdom walls. Once she was sure she was out of sight of everyone she brought her wings back out and took to the skies eagerly missing the way flying with wings felt that flapping her wings hard and going as fast as she could Alice could not help but smile and laugh a little at the familiar feeling of flying. Now completely sure she was an angel and not the child of two gods she felt like a weight was lifted from her shoulders and she could breathe again. Remembering that her wings would reflect her emotions she glanced to the side to look at them to see if she could notice a change. Looking over she saw that her wings did not change much in color except for that the wings almost looked gray instead of a silky black. Feeling a little disappointed that they were not pure white like her old wings the color slowly darkened back to the silky black color they were before Dut deciding not to look anymore she instead used the hunter's eye passive to search through the forest from the air for monsters that would wive her a decent bit of experience. Her goal was to reach level 30 before the war started if possible Dut spotting a group of bandits further in the forest she decided to take a closer look to see if she could see anything interesting Dut flying high above the camp she hovered in one place as she watched a few of the men take turns going in one tent and leaving after 10 minutes letting the next in line have their turn I wonder what is in the tent? Alice thought to herself but decided she should wait a little longer to see if anything would happen before she took on the bandits Dut not having to wait very long she noticed the men starting to go crazy. Flying a little lower to see more clearly her eyes widened in shock seeing a very large man exit the tent dragging the corpse of a female with almost no clothing on and bruises all over her by the head that the large man lifted her body up and threw it at some of the men who stopped their yelling and instead fought over who would be allowed to take the body to their tent. Seeing this Alice became enraged which caused her wings to emit her murderous intent in a mist of red with every flap. Pulling out her scythe she flew down as fast as she could swing her weapon all around her as she landed cutting two of the unsuspecting men down instantly while taking the others in the camp off guard backslash men gather we have a intruder backslash the larger man shouted while racing towards a tent to grab his weapons dot only seeing red alice infused her weapon with her flame element making her look like a god of death sent to seek vengeance on behalf of the abused and deceased woman that laid on the ground next to her. Without giving much thought to her actions she quickly flew around attacking everyone in her path injuring some and having her attacks blocked by others. Growing even more angry that the men didn't just lay down their lives for her to take she landed and used backslash vines of the shadow monarch backslash to grab almost all of the bandits and drain them of all their mana killing them slowly leaving the ones who did not get grabbed no choice but to either run or try to face her head on dot wanting to set an example for the ones who still had fighting spirit she made the vines line the captured men up around her while she swung her weapon quickly decapitating all 25 of her prisoners sending blood spraying at the rest of the bandits for a short moment. Backslash who are you? What do you want? Backslash the large man asked taking a step back in fear backslash you do not deserve to know my name. I was looking to kill monsters and I found some so come die. Backslash Alice replied coldly flapping her wings hard closing the distance between them in an instant as she swung her blade in attempt to take his head from his shoulders. Having her attack blocked repeatedly Alice pushed herself harder picking up on the speed of her attacks forcing him back a step with each attack. Getting annoyed the man jumped back and yelled out backslash armor backslash causing the ground to erupt around him and form around his body making him look more like a monster than a human. Backslash let's play you damn monster. Backslash he said now rushing at Alice punching her hard in the stomach sending her flying back. Using her wings to stabilize herself she changed her weapons element from fire to shadow and rushed at him this time. 51 Michael. Rushing at the man she swung hard in hopes of being able to end things quickly. 
To her surprise the man had some sort of ability because even using her shadow element she was not able to pass though his armor made of the earth beneath them. You're not the first monster I have faced that can use the shadow element little miss. He said seeing her surprise while grabbing he weapon and pulling it towards him landing a crushing punch to her stomach again sending her rolling on the ground letting go of he weapon. Get up. You don't get to just kill all my friends in front of me and then just lay on the ground after a few punches. He said tossing her weapon to the side. Fine. You asked for this. Alice said taking to the air and raising both of her hands above her head creating a large red magic circle. You think hitting me with a puny fire attack will do anything to me? Bring it on. He said looking up at her and realizing her attack was not small in the slightest. In fact she was pouring so much mana into her attack that he could feel the scorching heat through his armor. Quickly making a earth shield around him he couldn't do anything but pray her attack was nothing but a show. Seeing him put up his defenses after taunting her she put almost all the mana she had into her fireball making it grow even more in size and start catching the trees closest to them on fire even though they were still a distance away. Lowering her hands slowly she sent the enormous ball of fire crashing down with him as the target. The closer her attack got to the ground the more the man started fearing for his life since he was basically being cooked inside his armor. Alice watched calmly as her attack crushed and burned everything it came into contact with into ashes leaving nothing but a crater behind. Level up name, Alice class, Demi Angel title, Hunter, Apprentice of NYX, Sorceress HP, 1,010 slash 1,010 MP 2,350 slash 2,350 level 25 backslash U003E26 STR, 200 backslash U003E220 plus 10 VIT. 150 plus 5 int, 208 backslash U003E 238, plus 5 plus 200, dex, 45, plus 10 plus 5, def, 100, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, AGI, 95, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 50 backslash U003E0 skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by god, passive, demonic gaze, god's eye, passive, shadow eye, passive, hunter's sight, Passive. Dot quest. Meet with NYX reward. Another quest to meet NYX? Alice said out loud to herself still curious why the system wants her to talk with NYX so much. I can go see her later it doesn't matter I still want to level some more she said to no one while flying around looking for more monsters to fight with. Dot as Alice was flying around she noticed a large cave in the distance high up on the mountains. Getting closer she was able to see the remains of a freshly killed animal. Maybe some sort of beast lives here? She questioned while landing at the entrance wanting to know more about the place. Hiding her wings Alice formed a small fire in her hands before going into the cave further and looking around cautiously. As she slowly went deeper into the cave she was able to smell a familiar smell of barbecue the same kind they sell in the kingdom. Lowering her guard some she walked a little quicker. Hello is anyone here? She called out expecting a reply. When no one replied she became a little more cautious as the fire and meat being cooked came into view. She was surprised to see that not only was meat being cooked, there was even a table and bed and other furniture you would find inside a house. Excuse me, is anyone home? She asked again this time stopping in her tracks feeling a blade against her neck. Who are you and how did you get up here? A man said in a deep voice pressing his dagger against her neck a little harder showing he would kill her if she didn't answer. My name is Alice, I am an adventurer and I used the wind element to get up here. Alice replied not saying any more than she needed to. What do you want and what do you think of the demons? He questioned still holding his dagger still against her neck. I do not want anything from you I did not know anyone lived here. As for what I think of the demons I can tell you that I hate the demon Lord Kira. Alice answered honestly. Last question, what would you do if you met an angel? He asked moving the dagger a little to remind her to keep truthful. I would probably cry I was so happy if I was to meet one here. She replied honestly again. Withdrawing his weapon, he walked around her and took a seat next to the fire and his food, revealing his face and bringing tears to her eyes as she saw his perfect white wings. She finally was able to come face to face with another angel. You actually started crying. My name is Michael, take a seat. Michael said, moving a log off the woodpile next to him and placing it down for her next to the fire close by. I have so many questions. Alice said trying to keep her thoughts from clouding her mind to the point she couldn't speak anymore. I have a few of my own but I will let you start. Michael replied removing his food from above the fire and taking a bite. It has been so long since I have seen someone like me you have no idea how happy I am right now. Alice said with tears running from her eyes as she took a seat and tried drying her eyes. 
Like, you, what do you mean? Michael said while handing her some of his food. It will be easier if I show you, after that I can tell you a story. She replied while taking her wings out which let off a white so bright it illuminated the cave further showing just how happy she really was. Seeing this Michael felt his heart skip a beat, he had not seen wings so beautiful since he was with his daughter over a hundred years ago. You, are an angel? H how can this be? You are so young. Has our race been brought back? I failed God. Did someone else finish my mission? Michael began shooting off questions and dropping his food. My name is Alice and no the quest has not been completed yet. I was given the same quest to complete. As for being an angel I still do not know for sure. Alice replied honestly. How can someone with such radiant wings not be an angel? To have such wings you would have to be God's most prized angel. Did God bring you back as he did with me? Michael asked trying to sort his own thoughts as he asked. I was given these wings through a quest given to me by the system. The only reason they are so white is because of how happy I am to see you, a angel. I am currently not sure if God brought me back or if that is because I am the child of NYX and God. Alice replied a little dizzy from bringing back all of the confusion that surrounded her life. The system? What is that? A child between two gods has not been seen in eons. Michael replied a little confused himself. I only woke up a few months ago, at that time I received a notification from the system to kill monsters and go to a kingdom close to where I woke up. I didn't even have my wings, the only thing I had was my memories of being an angel. I followed the system's quests and received all sorts of benefits. I was convinced it was God trying to help me out until recently if I am being honest with you. Eventually I met with God in a dream where he explained how if I eradicate the demon race he would bring back the angel race through me as the mother of all angels. A while after that I met with NYX. This infuriated God and lots of things happened. I was face to face with both NYX and God where they proceeded to tell me that I was actually their child and that God had implanted the memories of Alice a loyal angel into my mind so that I would do God's bidding. NYX took me away from God's place wherever that may be and treated me as if I really was her child. I have no clue what I really am and there are a bunch of things that don't make sense now that I am saying everything out loud. Alice said in almost one breath. That. Michael began before Alice continued cutting him off. The. Fact that God brought angels back before me and promised the same things to them confuses me. Men cannot give birth so how did he plan to use you or the other angel to bring back the angel race. I cannot understand this no matter how much I think about it. To top everything off if God loved us angels why wouldn't he just create a male and female angel to repopulate the angel race? Nothing makes any sense. Alice said now putting some of the clues together about herself and the situation. 52 Shadow Monarch Seeing what God told her was obviously a lie she wanted to talk with NYX again even without the system quest telling her to do so. God would not just lie to us. Michael spat out fearing God's wrath from hearing such things come out of Angel's mouth. While I do not know everything I do know that only an angel could have wings such as ours. What if I really am the child of God's? Would it be possible then? Alice asked now certain that NYX was telling her the truth. It is impossible to say. Michael replied, I will come visit you again. Alice said walking into a shadow and entering the room NYX brought her to before. Not seeing NYX anywhere Alice decided to take her grimoire out and do some reading while she waited for NYX to show up. Show me more skills related to the shadow monarch. Alice said putting the book down on the table letting it flip through the pages until it finally stopped towards the end of the book. Shadow monarchs control a single target spell that uses the target's shadow to control their body. Upon activating you may control the target for as long as your mana allows at a rate of 10 mana per minute. If the target has a higher int value than the caster the spell becomes null. Armor of the Shadow Monarch a defensive type spell, requires 1800 mana to activate. Once activated the armor will last for 1 hour. The armor shrouds the user in a black armor completely making it next to impossible to see the user in dark places. The armor has the special ability to ignore physical attacks three times per use. Almost as soon as she tried asking for another spell to be shown NYX appeared in the room and took a seat next to Alice. I see you managed to find the Shadow Monarch's grimoire how interesting. NYX said with a smile. Did you know him? Alice asked curiously. Of course I did. I know everyone who can use my element. It has been maybe 300 years since I last thought of him though. NYX replied recalling some memories of when he used to visit her. I came here because of the system I told you about. I also think I believe you now, Alice said with a sad expression. That is amazing news. Why do you look so sad though? 
NYX replied wondering why Alice was not happier, because, that means all of my memories of my parents in the Angel Kingdom are just a lie implanted in me by a man who just wanted to use me to get what he wanted. Alice replied, we, cannot help what your father has done to you, all we can do is move forward. What is your name? NYX said pulling Alice closer and getting her to meet her eyes. What, do you mean? Alice replied, what, is your name? It is a simple question. NYX repeated, my, name is Alice, who do you remember raising you? My father and mother in the angel kingdom. Then it is simple. I may have birthed you but they are the parents you know. While I am jealous of that fact it doesn't change anything. I can be your mother now or even just your friend. I am here for you no matter if you want to do that lowly man's bidding or just live your life as you are. NYX said warmly hugging Alice in a way only a mother could. Alice was unsure of what to do but slowly returned NYX's embrace and was only able to whisper thank you. No let's just forget about all of that stuff for now. We can talk more about it later if you wish, but I have a present for you, NYX said instantly disappearing for a moment before returning with a small box in her hands. What, is it? Alice asked curiously. Just, a gift, think of it as an inheritance from the former shadow monarch, NYX said handing her the small normal looking box. You, don't have to open it now, NYX began only to see Alice already opening the box. I didn't expect you to be so excited haha, it's beautiful. Alice said holding a light purple and black ring so well crafted she wondered if a god created it. It, is a little too big for me to wear but still thank you. Alice said happily wishing she could wear such a pretty ring. Don't, be silly, try putting the ring on. Stand up before you do though. NYX said taking a seat next to her again. Listening to NYX she stood up and slowly put the ring on her middle finger and watched it shrink in size till it fit snugly on her like it was part of her finger. Why, tell me to stand? Alice asked curiously, pour, some of your mana into the ring, I think you will really enjoy this item, NYX said waiting for the show to start dot doing what NYX said she held out her hand looking at the ring and started putting some of her mana in the ring, a short while later a black cloud slowly started coming out of the ring swirling around her hand and worked its way up her arm until it was completely engulfing her in the black cloud dot pouring a little more mana in she felt like her armor and clothes felt different than usual. Eventually the cloud was sucked back into the ring revealing Alice in a completely new outfit. She no longer had the armor on, instead she was in a pitch black dress that showed a little more than she wanted to show. It barely reached her knees and hugged her body tightly, she was also now wearing white and black checkered thigh high stockings. You, look absolutely stunning, what do you think? NYX said happily, I, am a little uncomfortable. Alice replied looking at herself in the mirror noticing she has changed quite a bit from the last time she looked at herself. That, is not all the ring does, it should have also given you around a thousand more mana and a decent boost to your defense and agility. There are a total of four items the previous shadow monarch left behind but you are not ready for the others yet. NYX said motioning for Alice to take a seat again. What other items are there? Alice asked curiously. A, necklace, a key to unlock the grimoire you have and a few other things but you will need to be much much stronger before even thinking about them. NYX replied, A, key to unlock my grimoire? Alice questioned again, The, grimoire you have only has a very small amount of the shadow monarch's spells and skills. Once you obtain the key and fully unlock the book you will be able to learn everything the previous shadow monarch knew. However it is a path that not many are able to take, you're special so it shouldn't be a problem for you but it will still take some years before you get there. NYX replied, you, should probably be getting back now, it may not seem like it but you have been here with me for a few hours, NYX said giving her a hug again, bye, I will come again soon, Alice said before leaving the room and coming back out in her room in the Astala estate, Alice, is that you, Yumi called out before opening her door, yeah, I just got back what is going on, she asked forgetting all about her new appearance, whoa, I love the new look, Yumi said slowly walking over and checking Alice out, thanks, so what's new? Alice asked wondering if anything major happened while she was away. Nothing. Much the war is in a few days so the kingdom is super lively right now, even my father is taking part in it. Yumi replied, what? Erida is going to be in the war? Alice questioned, yeah, he feels like it is something he has to do and there are a lot of people who are supporting him and serving under him during the war. Yumi said with a sad face, don't. Worry I will be taking part in the war as well I won't let anything happen to your father. Alice said with a smile trying to comfort Yumi a little bit. Thanks, 
Anyways it is getting time for me to go to bed you have been gone all day so I just wanted to check in on you. Good night Alice. Yumi said heading to her room leaving Alice alone. She feels a little left out if you're wondering. Little Shadow said while yawning and stretching his paws out on the bed. Not much I can do about it when she is still injured. Did you get bigger? Alice asked seeing Little Shadow looking twice as large as normal. I woke up this way earlier. Must have to do with either your power increase or mine. Either way I'm going back to sleep. He replied half rolling onto his back clearly very comfortable. All right. Well I'll be walking around the kingdom I kind of want to join a regiment for the war. Alice said leaving the room and making her way to the adventure guild. 53 War Preparation Point 1 Alice? Janet called out seeing Alice come out of the estate's gates. Oh, hey Janet what's up? Alice asked wondering what she wanted. Nothing. Much I just got my duty details for the war, have you registered yet? Janet asked wanting to see if they got put in the same unit. I was actually on my way to register to take part in the war right now. Alice replied, awesome. Follow me and I will take you to get it done, maybe we will be put in the same unit. Janet said taking her hand and leading her through the crowded streets to the Adventures Guild. Okay, go talk to the bald guy sitting behind the booth over there. Janet said pointing across the crowded room where a small sign could be seen that showed recruitment could barely be seen over the top of people's heads. Giving a nod Alice moved in between people as best she could not getting very far. Annoyed by this she sank into the man's shadow next to her and came back out beside the man in charge of recruiting for the war. Good. God woman. Wait in line like. He started but decided to just take care of her first. I am here to join the war and help any way that I can. Alice said happy she got to skip over the line she had not noticed before. If you are a warrior, no you must be a mage. I will need to know what element you use as well your most powerful attack. The bald man said thinking it was silly he almost treated her like the average adventure since there was no way she could be useful with a weapon. I am good at both close range and long range combat. I use fire, wind, and shadow for my elements. My main weapon is a side that can be infused with one of the three elements that I control. Alice replied with a smile rather proud of her abilities. There is no need to lie miss, the man said with a look of doubt. Is there a place you can test me? Alice asked curiously. Hey, Francis, this little one says she has three elements on top of being skilled with a scythe. Take her out back and have a spar with her. Place her wherever you would like if she does well, he said waving her off. Come with me miss. Francis said with a smile that following behind the man she wasn't too surprised to see people naturally moved out of his way. He had to be one of the largest men she had ever seen. Not to mention his large battle axes strapped to each side. This should be a good spot, come at me whenever you would like. Francis said pulling one axe out and doing a small stretch. Sounds good to me. Alice said pulling her scythe out of her inventory and taking advantage of her boosted mana pool to infuse her weapon with the fire element. Seeing her weapon glowing red with flames Francis got into a defensive position knowing that if he didn't block her attack it would leave a nasty wound. Ready? Alice asked with a smirk seeing him already in a defensive position. Bring it on little girl, keep in mind we are just sparing before the war starts though. Francis said with a serious expression wishing Cory would have just let her into a random unit. Hearing him give the okay Alice started running to the right and used her rift warp to appear to his left giving her scythe a heavy swing aimed at his chest. Almost unable to follow her sudden position change he barely was fast enough to move his axe to parry her attack. Following up with a punch aimed at her stomach hoping to land the blow and call the match he was surprised to see she had already warped away again. This time pulling the mana out of her weapon so it wouldn't burn him Alice appeared to his right from a shadow and turned her blade away from him sweeping his legs out from under him and pointing a large fireball right at his head while standing over him. Give. Up yet? Alice said confidently. You. Pass, but what of your wind element? I overheard you say you could use that as well. Francis said getting back on his feet. I. Can do you need proof? Alice asked with a evil smile wondering how far she could send him flying with a tornado. No need. Francis replied not liking the look she was giving him. What about your most powerful long range spell? This is something I need to know before I assign you to a unit. Hmm. I would have to say for numerous enemies it would have to be one of my wind element attacks I just recently learned. I can conjure up a large tornado and control its path by riding in the center of it. Alice replied thinking back to when she first used it in the valley Kale took her and Yumi to train at. Ah. Uh. So we have two in our ranks now that can use large-scale attacks like that now. We are sure to win at this rate. I believe it would be beneficial to our efforts in this war if you joined Unit 1. 
It is led by a man named Arida. I will introduce you to him tomorrow at noon. Be sure to be here at that time to meet him and the rest of your unit. Francis said rubbing the back of his head. I will be here. If you're talking about Mr. Astala then you do not need to introduce us since I currently live with him and his daughter is my best friend. Alice said with a smile putting her weapon away. I guess I will see you tomorrow to meet with the others as well as discuss plans of action for the upcoming war. Francis said waving to her as he walked back to the guild. Having time to kill Alice decided to wander around the streets to see if she could find anything interesting to buy since she has just been sitting on her money and adding to it for a while. Smelling the same kind of barbecue she smelled in Michael's cave Alice followed the smell and found Michael selling the food in a stall on the side of the road wearing a very heavy looking coat making him look homeless. Michael, what in the world are you doing here? Alice asked curiously. I didn't imagine I would see you here Alice. How are you doing? You left my home rather quick after telling me all that. Michael asked. I am good, sorry about leaving like that. Are you not worried someone will find out what you are? Alice questioned. No, one thinks my look is out of place with so much going on right now so I decided to get out and be around the people of this land. Would you like some barbecue? Michael said while taking some of the food and handing it to her. Thank you, things are a little hectic with the war about to happen. By the way if you need a safe place to sleep go to the Astala estate and tell the guards I sent you. The owner and his daughter know about me and God so they should be willing to let you stay without you having to hide who you are. Erida the owner would probably enjoy talking with you as well. Alice said with a smile handing him some money. They know about you and still let you stay? Are you sure it is safe? Michael asked curiously. It is probably the safest place in the kingdom for you to show your wings as long as it is just around him and his daughter. We can go there together right now if you want. Alice said motioning for him to follow her. Deciding to trust her Michael got up and followed close behind Alice constantly checking his coat to make sure his wings didn't slip out or show at all. If you want I can get us there really quick if you're worried about people seeing. Alice said grabbing both his hands. What do you mean? Michael started to ask not realizing he was halfway into a shadow already. Wait what is happening? Michael asked trying not to panic as people stopped walking and watched them. It is something I can do because of my shadow element, we will be inside in a moment just don't let go of my hands. Alice replied as they completely disappeared from the road and came back out in Arida's office. 54, War Preparation Point 2. Alice, how did you bring us here so fast? Michael said clearly freaked out at the sudden change of location. I can use the shadow element and I used one of my spells to travel us through the shadows in order to get us here quickly. It is also how I left your cave so suddenly. Alice said not expecting his reaction. Do you plan on introducing us Alice? Erida said sitting behind his desk curiously. Oh, right? Erida this is Michael, he is an angel. Alice said excitedly. Alice, it is for me to decide who knows my secrets. Michael said angrily. Michael, Please try to calm down I am sure Alice here was just excited to meet with another angel after everything that has happened with your race. Erida said trying to calm him down and offering him a drink. I am sorry. It just has been so long since I have been able to be myself that I am still fearful of being hunted down by the demons. Michael said taking a drink of the water. I hope it is okay but I told Michael he could stay here for a while and stretch his wings without worry. Alice said giving Erida a sad look. That will be fine just stop pouting. Erida said turning to face Michael. I will have a room prepared for you, as far as your wings go no one in my house would tell a soul so feel free to take your coat off at any time. He said offering Michael a hand showing him he could relax a little bit. Thank you, I think I will keep the coat on for now if you don't mind though. Michael said shaking Erida's hand. Oh right, do you want to go to the guild together tomorrow Mr. Astala? Alice asked with a smile. Sure, may I ask what for though? Erida replied curiously, I will be in your unit during the war, tomorrow we meet everyone so I thought we could just go together. Alice said proudly, somehow, I figured you would end up in my unit, sure I will come get you first thing in the morning. Erida replied, sounds good to me, Alice said turning to leave the room. Bye. The way Alice, since your father can't be here to tell you this I will tell you for him, you should try to dress a little better, you're showing too much skin try to change if you can please. Erida said getting a headache thinking of how worried he would be if his daughter wore what Alice was wearing. MMMM, I will think about it but no promises. 
Alice said, closing the door behind her. Underscore 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 on next morning underscore 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 under ready to go Alice? Erida said knocking on her door. Yup, let's go. Alice said opening the door and walking with Erida out of the house and through the streets to the Adventures Guild to meet with Francis and the rest of the members of their unit for the war. Entering the guild Alice was surprised to see almost everyone sitting down at different tables being rather quiet talking with their groups and planning things out. This place is normally pretty loud it is kind of weird seeing it so orderly. Alice said quietly to Erida. I see our table come on Alice. Erida said changing his demeanor to that of the serious hero of the kingdom that he was known for. Seeing this change she just nodded and quietly followed him and took a seat between him and Janat who was more than happy to see Alice there. I knew from the moment we met we would have lots of fun together in the future. Janat said giving Alice a hug and scooting closer to her. Don't be weird about it. Alice said trying to escape her hug. Settle. Down ladies, it is time we talked and introduced ourselves to the people we will be serving beside for this war. Erida said seriously standing up causing the rest of the room to immediately go quiet. Most of you here know who I am already so I will skip over introducing myself but I will however say this. We are gathered here to protect this kingdom that we all love and do not want to see under the rule of another kingdom. I would like to ask that each and every one of you no matter how weak or powerful you are take today seriously and to heart. Take the time to get to know your neighbor and know that you may not see them again in the days to come. Remember that no one asked you to fight you are here of your own free will to protect this kingdom's people. It is not just another quest given by the guild this war will decide the outcome of the normal citizens that live peacefully here. So give this your best effort and do what you can to help the people of your unit. From today on you are all my family. I will let your unit leaders take things from here so be sure to pay attention and don't speak out of turn. Erida said powerfully before taking his seat again. Nicely done as always, said Francis shaking Erida's hand. I will start things off, my name is Erida Astala and I will be this unit's leader. If you listen to my orders I promise you will have a higher chance of coming back alive even though we will be fighting on the front lines. I am happy to meet you all, Alice would you go next please? Erida said turning his attention to her waiting for her to introduce herself to the rest of the unit. I am Alice, I don't know if I will be fighting as a warrior or a mage during the war but I am skilled at both. It is nice to meet you all, Alice rippled with a smile. I. Guess I'm next, my name is Janet I fight as a mage using long range large area of effect attacks. I will only be useful for a short time during the war but I can promise I will take out as many enemies as I can. Janet said happily, you can call me Roger, I am normally at the front of my group during adventures. I can use the light element so I can blind my enemies while taking any damage they throw at me using a pretty large shield so if you need to rest just stay behind me. Roger who was only a little smaller in size than Francis said. Nice. To meet everyone, I am called Cyana and I mainly use a bow. I can use the wind element to change my arrow's course after firing it so I will have your backs during the war. Cyana a skinny girl with blonde hair and grey eyes said cheerfully. I am Francis, but you all know that already. I will deal out as much damage as I can to the enemies that get close to us. I assure you that it will be much different than what you experienced when you spared with me. Francis said flexing his muscles. Now, that the introductions are out of the way we can discuss a formation that would be best for us to use. Erida said while motioning for one of the guild employees to bring some food and drinks for them. Francis, Roger, and myself will be located at the front of our formation with Roger being in the middle. Cyana, you should be behind us if possible. I will use the earth element to create a high up platform for you allowing you to keep watch and warn us of anything we may not see. Janet I want you to use your most powerful move as soon as they are in range to lower their moral and take as many out as you can. Once you have done that stay close to Alice and let her protect you while you recover enough to fight again. Erida said while using their cups to show their positions on the table. What? About me? Alice asked feeling a little left out. I believe it would be best if you watch both sides of us and deal as much damage as you can to the enemies that pass by us. It shouldn't be a issue with how fast you can move around. If we see trouble coming use the wind element and go crazy with the tornado I have heard about from Yumi. 
Erida said still not sure what Alice could really do and howsoever her tornado would be. With everyone knowing their roles and positions for the war to come they began to chat amongst themselves not knowing that the invaders were already only a few hours away. What is everyone freaking out about? Alice asked noticing a guy causing a scene at the front of the guild. I'm not sure. I will go check it out though. Francis said walking over telling everyone to calm down. Listen. Up everyone. The war will start sooner than we thought. Our enemy is coming as we speak get ready and meet outside the gates with your units. Francis's voice boomed through the guild. 55, war point 1. Rushing out of the guild Alice along with all of the adventures made their way to the front gates where the kingdom's army was busy setting up their defenses along the walls surrounding the kingdom making quick progress putting up traps and heavy weaponry. With this sight in view the reality of what was happening quickly set in not with just the adventures but with the people living in the kingdom as well. Alice was able to see the streets lined with the citizens standing on the sides of the roads shouting their words of encouragement and luck to those who would be laying down their lives to protect them. Among the people Alice thought she saw Yumi waving at her but she vanished in the crowd before Alice has the chance to run over to talk with her. Alice, focus and don't fall too far behind us. We need to stick together otherwise you will be separated from us in the crowd of people. Erida said sternly, right, sorry I thought I saw Yumi and I wanted to talk with her before all of this starts. Alice said looking a little sad she didn't think to talk with Yumi before going to war. It has already started, try not to think too much about it until after we come back alive. Erida replied a little softer this time also wanting to spend a little more time with his child. For the next few minutes Alice and the others walked quickly in silence before reaching the front of line where they would lead the adventures and kingdom's army to war. Shortly after a large man on a horse yelled out march, giving the signal for everyone to begin their short journey to where the battle would take place. You don't have to feel so uneasy Alice, if anyone gets close to us I will blow them so far away they won't know where they are. Janet said keeping pace with her seeing Alice still looking a little sad. Thank you, I just feel like something bad is going to happen so I feel a little worried. Alice said not being able to think of a reason she felt this way quest, achieve a noteworthy performance during the war. Reward, plus 10 levels, title, I get a quest at a time like this. Alice said to herself. What? Do you mean a quest? Janet asked curiously. I was just talking to myself, giving myself the quest to stay alive. Alice replied. I am on the same quest, I will have your back if you have mine so cheer up a little just vent all your stress to our enemies? Janet said with a smile. Yeah, you're right I will be sure to do that. Alice said not realizing the enemy was already in sight. Get in your formations and spread out. The commander of the army yelled out already noticing the enemy in the distance. Hearing his command all of the units got into their forms and slowly marched forward as the army slowly followed behind them ready to take on anyone who got past the adventures. Moving through the trees and coming into an open clearing the enemy launched the first attack sending out large fireballs at Alice and the rest of the warriors on her side. Almost mesmerizing Alice she watched as the fireballs and other attacks crashed into an seemingly invisible shield that stopped the attacks in their tracks sending waves of bright blue rippling around them. That can happen when a lot of light element users work together to form a barrier it's always interesting to watch. Francis said as they slowly continued to move forward through the attacks thanks to the people working to shield them from harm. As soon as the enemy was close enough Janet slowly began to lift off the ground while she chanted causing the sky to become grey letting off a few bursts of thunder before she finally finished her chant and let out a yell fully activating her spell. Both armies stopped moving seeing Janet use her spell and some even began thinking it was a bluff when nothing happened right away. Everyone's eyes widened in shock as massive lighting bolts rained down on the enemy instantly killing countless people and stunning the ones who were lucky not to be directly hit. Landing softly on the ground Janet took a few deep breaths while following the plan and joining Alice who was already standing where she was needed. Get. Ready? Erida yelled out while slamming his fist on the ground creating a tall pillar for Cyana to stand on and keep watch over them while providing support where needed for her unit and those who would need it. Try your best to recover and leave the rest to me. Alice said while pulling out her scythe and getting ready for the enemy that was now charging at them. Before Alice had the chance to do anything Francis was already swinging both his axes powerfully sending the smaller framed enemies flying over their heads while Cyana took the opportunity to use their airborne state to land the final blows with her arrows. 
Both Roger and Erida had fully covered themselves with armor made from the ground beneath them and worked to control as many enemies as they could taking blows and dealing out as many as they received without slowing down. Remembering her job Alice put her rift warp skill to use and masterfully moved from one side to the other knocking down some enemies and seriously wounding others as they did their best to push through the front line and break their formations. Continuing the formation. Perfectly Alice was yanked to the side before she could warp again. Alice they are not stopping some of us need a breather. It is time you showed us all what you can do with your wind element, Erida said for a short moment before stomping on the ground sending a shock wave forward giving Alice just enough time to get in front and start her spell. Rift warping as close to the enemy lines as she could she began letting the wind fly in circles around her rapidly as she activated the spell causing the grey clouds that still lingered in the sky to start funneling down as she lifted into the air disappearing from view. The enemy started to retreat as far back as they could trying to avoid. Being sucked in and thrown across the land. Not giving them much time to run, Alice enjoyed the feeling of controlling a natural disaster and went full force at the enemy, rapidly catching up to the ones fleeing. Now, right behind them, she watched as enemy after enemy was sucked in and flown in all different directions. Adding more mana to her spell, the tornado grew in size, and even trees began to uproot and fly into her spell, knocking over and taking some enemies during the process. This is the power of that little girl. Francis said drinking some water and watching the show Alice was providing for them. She is a little special, but it is good that we have two powerhouse mages on our side. If not we wouldn't have the time to catch our breath like this, Erida said while pulling the pipe out of Roger's mouth. Alice is giving us a break to catch our breath not take it away, he said crushing the pipe under his foot. My father gave me that pipe asshole, Roger replied. You said that about the last four pipes I crushed, Erida said with a laugh. I am almost all good to go again, Janet said sitting on a dead enemy using him as a chair while she held on to a special stone that allowed her to recover her mana faster than normal. Good, does anyone know how long Alice can keep this up or does she plan on taking all of them out herself? Roger said giving an whistle to one of the people he could see flying to meet their maker as they went out of view. I just know she has a very large mana pool so I couldn't begin to guess. Erida said watching Alice go crazy. Taking a peek at her renaming mana she was happy to see she still had over a thousand mana left as her tornado was coming to an end. The tornado started to dissipate in the middle of the enemy's army allowing them to surround her in hopes of taking out the person responsible for so much carnage. When the tornado was competently gone both sides were shocked to see that Alice was not in the center she was completely out of sight of both sides. Good thing I took the time to fly above the clouds otherwise that would have been the end of me. Alice said taking a moment to enjoy the breeze high up in the air thankful no one could see her taking the chance to stretch her wings. 56, War.2 Looking down she could see the enemy's army regrouping. Off in the distance behind them she saw something that made her feel a sense of hopelessness. She was able to spot two demons quickly approaching with reinforcements to aid their army that was being pushed back so early into the war. Flying as quick as she could Alice lost all reason and forgot all about hiding her wings. She flew right back to her unit where everyone stopped what they were doing just to look at her making her way back. Two demons and reinforcements are coming, Alice shouted as loud as she could to warn everyone that was able to hear her as she landed next to Erida. You got your wings back, Erida said to everyone's surprise. It is not like that. We do not have time for this right now we have to retreat, Alice said in a panic recalling the memories of the angels being exterminated. I am afraid we cannot do that. Francis said placing a hand on Alice's shoulder. Everyone here is fighting to protect something we love be it friends or family. No one here will retreat even seeing a demon, our numbers are great and unless it is the demon Avon we should be able to push back. Francis is right Alice, what would happen if we surrendered? What about you me, I know how highly you value my daughter. This is war and casualties will happen, the best we can do is fight with all of our might. Diana I need you to go inform the army that two demons are coming to help out our enemy, Erida said turning to Diana who gave him a nod and quickly made her way back to relay the massage. Putting her wings away Alice took her place in the formation and stood next to Janat who was staring at her back. Is that a spell or a special skill that you have? You can call it a skill that I have, Alice said wishing she had taken a few more seconds to just use the shadow element to return somehow. That is amazing. Those wings looked really pretty if it is something you can teach you will have to show me I wonder how they would look on me, Janet said making Alice feel a little better about showing her wings. Quest complete reward, plus 10 levels, title, war maiden, light element looking at her new title and the light element being given to her Alice began to wonder just what was the system and who exactly gave it to her dot title.
War Maiden, a title given to Alice by, for striking fear into her enemies' hearts while causing destruction to everyone in her path. Title grants plus 100 str, plus 100 def. Name, Alice class, Demi Angel title, Hunter, Apprentice of NYX, Sorceress, War Maiden HP, 1,060-1,060 MP4,4000-4,400 level 26 backslash U003E36 str, 220, plus 10 plus 100, VIT, 150 plus 5 int, 238 backslash U003E438, plus 5 plus 200, DAX, 45 backslash U003E245, plus 10 plus 5, DEF, 100, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10 plus 100, AGI, 95 backslash U003E195, plus 5 plus 10, Skill Points, 500 backslash U003E0 Skills, Familiar Telepathy, Blessed by God, Passive, Demonic Gaze, God's Eye, Passive, Shadow Eye, Passive, Hunter's Sight, Passive, Wings of Sorrow. Having put all of her points into her stats and getting the boost from her title, the air around Alice was sucked towards her, lifting her up slowly as her body adapted to the change in power. The people around her could not help but watch in awe as they could feel a noticeable change in her aura. Alice, what happened just now? The mana in the air was so thick that even I am feeling fully recharged. Janet said, feeling like she was just pumped full of mana standing next to Alice. I was given a title by an unknown god, I think. I am not too sure but I feel really good right now, Alice said not knowing how else to explain herself to so many people on that note just who gave me the title, Alice asked herself not knowing who could have given her the title, she thought it was just a system reward but reading the title information let her know that someone besides the system had given it to her through the system. Settling back down Cyana had returned and relayed a message that the army had given her to tell Arida. The commander said that he is sending the light element users forward to assist with attacks to help weaken and defeat the demons assisting our enemy. What are those people even thinking? The whole reason this war started is because they blamed our kingdom for the attack by the demons and now they are working together with the demons. It doesn't make a lick of sense. Francis said picking his axes back up and getting ready for the enemy that was now charging forward again. Focus. Everyone we will have time for questions later. Arida said taking advantage of the resupply of mana and sending a large chunk of the ground hurling at the enemy that crashing on the ground in front of them the enemy forces stopped in their tracks and took up formations of their own while the two demons made their way to the front standing between the two armies. Kingdom of Samaria and all of those fighting here today listen well, we are here for a girl by the name of Alice, hand her over and we promise there will be no more need for bloodshed here today. The taller demon dressed in a mage's robes said projecting his voice for everyone to hear. That is right, we know you are here today fighting Alice. Come forth and spare your friends the trouble of fighting a war that does not need to be fought. The second demon said who was wearing heavy armor. Alice, do not move from your position. No one here has any plans of letting one of our own be handed to demons. Francis said surprising Alice. If we can avoid the war maybe it is just better I go with them. Alice said taking a step forward. It is your choice but they will not just forgive the casualties they suffered today a war will happen even if you go with them. Arida said grabbing her arm. Ah, there she is. The taller demon said quickly closing the gap and now standing next to her and Arida. Come. Now Ellis I promise no harm will come to your little friends here. He said coldly. Kira has given me a year. That year is not up yet so return at once. Alice said pulling out the necklace Kale had given her. Foolish. Girl that little trinket means nothing to me, Kale has long been under suspicion and it has been confirmed today seeing that you have wings. You must come with us so that we can figure all of this out. The wings, how you are apparently Lord Kira's daughter, all of this needs to come to light and it has to come out today. He said putting his hand around her other arm pulling her to him. Get your hands off her, Arida said striking him in the jaw causing him to stumble backwards. Standing upright the demon looked Arida in the eyes and snapped his fingers, giving the other demon the signal. Hearing the snap he quickly took his sword out and stabbed it through Arida's stomach and pulled it out just as quickly as he put it through him. No! Alice screamed releasing her aura and wings making the people around her with a weak mana pool fall to their knees feeling sick. Letting the rage take over Alice's wings turned pitch black and released a blood red mist with the smallest movement. 
Quickly flying forward she grabbed the tall demon by the next using all of her strength and slamming him into the ground with a loud thud breaking the ground beneath him making him spit up some blood. Pulling out her scythe Alice flew to the sky and infused it with the light element pouring a massive amount of mana into it causing the blade to shine so brightly everyone on the battlefield shielded their eyes. Alice yelled out in anger while diving down as fast as they could swing her weapon quickly tearing the unconscious demon's body in half sending the upper half flying at the enemy army. Pulling out his shield the other demon let out a battle cry of his own bolstering his strength and charging at Alice. Alice blocked his strike with the tail end of her weapon and kicked the man hard in his gut cracking the metal plate armor and sending him a few steps back. Not seeing anything other than the only demon left standing she rift warped in front of him and quickly brought her weapon down on his shoulder almost cutting his arm off. I wonder how far of a fall you can survive. Alice said so coldly he could not begin to understand the depths of her rage and hatred. Remembering a spell she read in NYX's room Alice placed her hand on his back and whispered Shadow Monarch's control seconds later the demon's shadow vanished and he stood still waiting to be given a command. Take my hands and do not let go until I tell you. Alice said slowly walking around him and putting her hands out. What is she doing why is the demon holding her hands now? Janet said resting Arida's head on her lap while a mage worked hard to close the wound and stop the bleeding. I do not know but I don't think that is Alice right now. Cyanna said quietly to herself watching Alice slowly take the demon off the ground and into the sky above them. Flying high up Alice still did not think the height matched the crime the demon committed so she flapped her wings harder flying well above the clouds. This is high enough. Alice said looking down seeing the kingdom in the distance looked tiny. Let go of my hands and stay awake until you die. Alice said letting go of his hands and watching as he fell through the sky with fear in his eyes. 57, War.3 Flying alongside the demon Alice enjoyed the look of fear on his face more and more as she thought of what he did to Arida. Spreading her wings before they reached the ground Alice hovered in the air above the small crater the demon made on impact with the ground. Looking down still at his shattered body Alice was unaware everyone on the battlefield was silently watching her waiting for her next move. Her allies felt like they had a god on their side who could defeat two demons on her own. Her enemies however felt like she was an angel of death sent to eradicate them with ease. Don't give up man she is one person. The enemy commander said trying to bring the moral of his troops back to a acceptable level. Hearing his shout the people supporting Alice yelled out already feeling Victor was within their grasps with such a powerful figure aiding them. Remembering what sent her into a rage in the first place Alice turned to face her unit and quickly made her way to them to check on Arida. Charge? The enemy commander yelled out leading the rest of their forces seeing Alice having her back turned to them. With her allies rushing past her to match their charge Alice fell to her knees next to Arida who was barely holding on to life. Alice, I need you to do me a favor. He said coughing up blood. Anything. Just please don't die. Alice said with tears falling from her face. Tell. You me that I love her and I could not be more proud of her. She has grown into a beautiful young lady and I am sorry I did not get to spend more time with her. She is now in charge of the estate and business, I know she will do an amazing job. Arita said growing weaker. Why? Can't you heal him? Alice said turning to the mage still working to heal his wounds while exhausting all of his mana in the process. Alice, it is not his fault. The demon's blade was coated in poison I do not have long left. I have thought of you as a daughter for a Arida tried saying before closing his eyes for the last time. Holding on to Arida's hand and crying Alice felt the heartbreak of losing a father once again which caused her wings to grow slightly bigger as the sorrow in her heart doubled in size in that moment. Alice, we can fight the rest of this war without you. Someone will be coming by to take Arida back to the kingdom. I think you should go with him. Janet said placing her hand on Alice's to get her attention. No, I will finish this war. Alice said taking to the sky again needing to vent her sadness with no other option of what to do. Seeing Alice flying above them the enemy commander ordered the reserve mages to fire off any spell they had that could take her out of the air so they could get rid of her for good. I know you can hear me. I do not know why you are giving me the power of the system or who you are but I need answers I am sick and tired of not having any answers. Who am I? Alice said not caring who could hear her while launching fireball after fireball down at the enemy at random. With half of the enemy's mages trying to bring Alice down while protecting the rest of their army from her attacks, Alice's allies were able to deal with things much easier allowing them to push back with little to no resistance from the mages. Fuck. It. Alice said flying above the clouds again. Putting her hands out Alice began to form the meteor spell she had managed to learn in the fight with the bandit. 
Seeing that it did not take as much mana as she thought it would she began pouring all of her mana into the meteor almost doubling its size and sending it crashing down while she tried her hardest to stay in the air fighting off the feeling of passing out. With the battle raging on intensely both sides army commanders looked to the sky in horror seeing the meteor slowly falling from the sky with Alice nowhere to be seen. Almost at the same time the commanders yelled out retreat now through voice amplification causing the war to stop in its tracks as they all began to feel the scorching heat above them. With both sides fleeing as fast as they could from the area Alice passed out and began to fall from the sky behind the meteor. Crashing on top of the slower enemies and instantly turning them into ash before hitting the ground and causing a massive explosion that sent a shockwave so violent and quick it sent both armies flying and knocking most unconscious clearing the Battlefield in a instant underscore 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 on up feeling the world around her spinning making her sick Alice sat up and puked on the floor next to her where Alice tried saying before getting cut off do not speak yet child your body exhausted more mana than it could handle so you're in a dangerous spot right now Lay back down and drink this, a man she had never seen before said handing her a cup with purple liquid to drink. Keep quiet for a while we will talk more after you get some more rest, the mysterious man said leaving the room as she passed back out underscore 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 where is Alice? I can't handle losing both her and my father. Yumi yelled out in anger at the commander of the army who was holding a small ice block to his head which was bruised from being sent flying off his horse. No, one knows where she is or what happened. You know no one here would lie to you. We are all indebted to your father and no one is not mourning his loss right now. You must believe me when I say we have no idea where she is. The commander said laying back and closing his eyes. Miss, Astala you know I am doing everything in my power to find her. Your energy would be better spent near King Mark said before turning his head to the side at the thought of mentioning Arida being dead. Do. Not even say it. Yumi said fighting tears and the feeling of utter loneliness with both her father and Alice being gone. Come. With me, I have some things I want to show you. Mark said taking Yumi's hand and helping her up. Where. Are you taking me? Yumi questioned as they made their way through the streets. Something. To show you that even though your father may not be here with us he will never be forgotten. King Mark said holding back some tears of his own dot coming to view of the middle of the kingdom Yumi fell to her knees and began to cry even harder seeing what the king was trying to show her. Your father and I have been friends for a very long time and no one but you will mourn his death more than I will. I had planned on this being a present for his safe return. It will now serve as a memorial to this kingdom's greatest hero. Mark said placing his hand on the two-story high statue of Arida in his prime with Yumi standing next to him as a little girl. He would have loved it. Yumi said crying and leaning against the statue holding her knees against her chest. I will give you some time. For now I will keep people away from here so mourn your father in peace and know that I will always be here for you. Mark said before waving to his guards to clear the area for Yumi. Jumping out of Yumi's shadow and nudging his head against hers Yumi took little shadow in her arms. I wish more than anything I could speak with you shadow. You're all I have right now. Yumi said sadly hugging shadow tight. Hearing her wish little shadow opened his mouth and cut her arm before licking the wound to heal it. What? The hell shadow? Fine if you don't like me that much just leave like everyone else? Yumi said emotionally I only did that so I could grant your wish, but I can leave if that is what you want. Little shadow replied laying on her lap knowing she didn't want him to leave. Thank. You. Yumi replied wiping away some of her tears. Is. Alice still alive? Yumi asked almost not wanting to know the answer she is very weak right now that is all I can tell for the moment but yes she is alive. Shadow replied, can't. You go to her through her shadow? Yumi asked hopeful wherever Alice is she is in a place not reachable in this world. I am also worried about her but I know if I try to her that I will be lost in the rift she uses to move between places. Little Shadow replied having thought about going to her many times already. 58 Realm of the Goddess. Good morning Alice. A woman with blue hair wearing a robe said, Morning. Alice said, rubbing her eyes feeling like she had just slept for a year while sitting up on the bed. Did. You sleep well? My name is Kia. She asked with a smile while handing Alice some sliced apples. I. Don't think I have ever slept that good before to be honest. Thank you. Alice replied, taking an apple slice and eating it. How. Can an apple taste this good? 
Alice asked, shocked, still able to taste the pure bliss that entered her mouth. All food in the realm of the gods will naturally taste much better than it would in the mortal world. Kia said, pleased to hear she enjoyed the food. Wait, realm of the gods? Why am I here? Alice asked, realizing what Kia had just said. June, brought you here as you lost consciousness in the mortal world so that he could speak with you. As for the rest of your questions I think it would be better if he answered them himself. June will be back shortly, you are free to look around if you wish. Kia said, leaving Alice alone in the room. Looking around the room Alice was shocked to see the room looked pretty average, in fact it was not even as luxurious as her room at the Astala estate. Getting up she decided to leave the room and take a look at the rest of the place while she waited on the man named June walking around the house Alice felt a little let down seeing how it was just as bland as the one she was staying in. What kind of god lives in a place so run down looking? Alice asked herself while picking up a wooden plate. I am sorry it is not to your liking. I do not live here though, this is just a house I built to remember one of my followers who prayed every day for 50 years without fail. When he died I also brought him here but that was a very long time ago, a well-toned shirtless man said while entering the house. Are you June? Alice asked curiously. Yes, I am, would you like to talk somewhere of more grandeur? June asked, snapping his fingers instantly warping them to a palace made of black and well marble. The other place was fine. Alice replied looking around in amazement at the statues so well crafted they almost looked real. Those are all of my followers who have done their best to worship me since they came to know of my name. This is just how I honor them when they pass away in the mortal world. June said, walking over to one and placing his hand gently on the cheek of one of the statues. Why, did you bring me here? Alice asked curiously. Do I need a reason? I am a god. June said, taking a seat next to the statue. I have never heard of your name before, the only god I have met is NYX. Alice replied, oh. I believe you have met the god of the angels have you not? June questioned. No, offense but he is no god. He is just a pathetic man who uses people. Alice replied more coldly than she had meant to. Ha 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 ha, that is great. Hey Sauron did you hear that? June said, snapping his fingers again, bringing Sauron the god of the angel race into the room. You, un Sauron began to say before being warped away by June again. Alice stood still in silence not even knowing where to begin or what to say at the sudden spectacle she just witnessed. Relax. Sauron cannot come here without my permission not to mention he barely has enough power to stay a god right now. June said calmly to try to ease any fear Alice may have had. Are you the one who gave me the system? Alice asked without thinking. You have good intuition if you pick that as your first real question. Yes, what you call the system was my gift to you. June said with a smile waiting for a thank you. So, you are the one who gives me the quests and rewards. My weapon and my wings are both created by you then? Alice asked, wanting to get all the answers she could. I guess your intuition is not as good as it first seemed. June replied slightly upset that Alice did not thank him for his gift. To answer your question, yes. Everything in regards to the system is my creation. June said trying to remember Alice had no idea how gods interacted with each other and to just let her go without the gratitude. I'm. Sorry, it looks like I am annoying you, Alice said, seeing him looking both bored and annoyed. No, it is fine, I brought you here so I will answer any question you ask before I begin to ask my questions, June said in a better mood almost instantly. Who am I? Alice asked the question that has haunted her the most, fearing the answer. It is not my place to say too much about this, I may be a higher ranked god than Sauron but NYX and I share the same rank. I can however tell you that you are not a mortal. The gift I have given you can allow you to go further than you can believe is possible. June said, finding a way to completely answer and not answer the question at the same time. So, I really am a demigod then. Alice said not knowing who her parents are but knowing she isn't mortal changed the way she thought about things from that moment. If, your questions are done, mind if I ask some of my own? June asked politely. Ask, away. Alice replied, why, do you care so much about who your parents are? I have watched you since you became you and it has always held my curiosity. June asked Alice throwing her off a little bit. I, Alice began to answer when she realized she had no reason a god would understand. I do not know. Alice, what are you doing here? NYX asked while running over and giving her a hug. June, brought me here. Alice replied which caused NYX to give June a small glare sending June on the defensive. I just figured I would save her and ask a few questions while she was here that is all. June replied, 
rubbing the back of his head while looking away from her eyes. Since you are here, come with me Alice, I am sure June will accept me taking you for a moment. NYX said, taking her hand and walking away with Alice not caring what June thought. I just recently learned of the gift he gave you, I planned on telling you about that the next time I got to see you. NYX said while leading Alice through the street that almost instantly turned to nothing but a void. This is my domain, since you have come here you will be able to use the void to come here anytime you wish now. NYX said happily, do gods not believe in asking permission before dragging people around? Alice asked curious if this would be here life, would she just be dragged around by gods for the rest of her life? You're my daughter so unlike June I don't need it. NYX replied, still looking very happy. Fine. Alice replied just giving in without fighting. Have a meal with me and I will send you back to the Astala estate. I have been keeping an eye on your friend Yumi and she misses you quite a lot. NYX said, bringing Alice into her home. Mom, if I come back later to have a meal with you can I go back now? Erida is dead and I really need to be there for Yumi. Alice said almost having a panic attack calling NYX mom while knowing it would make her happy enough to let her go back to the mortal realm. Hearing Alice call her mom NYX turned and gave Alice a tight hug. Yes of course baby girl but be sure to keep your promise and come back to see me? NYX said before snapping her fingers and sending Alice back to her room at the estate Yumi Alice is back? Little Shadow said loudly. No. Need to yell Shadow I will go get her. She cannot understand you even if you meow loudly. Alice replied while petting him before jumping in surprise when her door almost burst off the hinges as Yumi ran through and hugged her tightly. I am so happy you are safe and back. Yumi said, crying into Alice's neck. I am sorry about Arida. Alice said feeling guilty she could not do anything to protect him. Don't. You are basically a hero for what you did to the demons. No one in the kingdom does not know your name now. Yumi said, recalling everything the adventures told her about how Alice went into a frenzy when Erida was stabbed. I know you cared about my father a lot. I am sorry you had to see him taken from us. Yumi said, still holding on to Alice not wanting to let go. 59 Death of a Hero Not able to sleep, Alice took to the streets to walk around and enjoy the peace and feel the breeze while the people of the kingdom partied and enjoyed their victory. Nearing the Adventurers Guild she was almost instantly spotted by the staff causing them to rush over and greet her. Miss Alice, you have to come to the guild and join us if you plan to be up at this time of night, everyone would love to see you there. Everyone? Alice said curiously. Come. With me? The woman said excitedly. Walking through the doors everyone who was having a great time drinking and having fun with the others in the guild slowly quieted down until it was silent. Not knowing what to say or do Alice began to feel a little uncomfortable as everyone just stared at her. On behalf of everyone here I want to say thank you for helping us win the war. One clearly drunk man yelled out while walking over and offering his hand for her to shake showing his respect. Shaking his large hands Alice felt a little more at ease as everyone slowly took turns greeting her and thanking her for her help. Can we see your wings? One of the younger girls in the crowd yelled out hoping to see her wings up close in hopes of touching them. I, yeah, I also want to see your wings. I didn't get to see them clearly with how fast you moved on the battlefield. Another man said from a different side of the room. Everyone should let her relax. I am sure she has a lot on her mind as you all surely remember what happened and the people we have lost. King Mark said at the entrance of the guild causing everyone to take a knee and go quiet. Care. To join me for a walk, Miss Alice? King Mark asked with a serious look. Nodding her head she followed him out of the guild and into the street as they were escorted by numerous knights back towards the castle. Is. There something you wanted to talk about? Alice asked quietly. There. Is. The king said while dismissing his knights as they entered the castle grounds. I wish to hold a festival as a celebration for everyone's hard work and sacrifice during the war. I believe it will be a great thing for the people of this kingdom. With that being said the people have lost a hero they looked up to, which brings me to my point of meeting with you in private. The people have already chosen their hero, your name has spread to every resident of this kingdom. I would like to ask you to be part of the festivities and bring joy to the people that live here. King Mark said uncertain of how she would respond to his plans. It sounds like a lot of fun, but I do not feel like I would be able to be part of something like that just yet. Alice replied thinking back on how she hasn't even had time to mourn Arida's death nor has she got to see Yumi for anything longer than a few words in what felt like weeks. Seeing Alice's face and expression he could pretty much guess what she had on her mind. The festival can wait until after we hold a proper funeral for my old friend. I will keep in touch with you about what I plan to do for the funeral. 
Giving him a nod Alice took her wings out and took to the clear sky and flew back to the estate to try and get some sleep while thinking of ways to spend some time with Yumi underscore 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 and up early the next morning Alice greeted all of the maids and people who kept the house operational before entering the kitchen. Looking around she noticed one of the cooks preparing some food for breakfast. Would you mind letting me help? Alice asked curiously, thinking it would be a nice change of pace from her normal daily life. Are you sure Miss Alice? This work is for the employees, I would be happy to have you help but I do not wish to waste your time. The cook said happily. So, what can I do to help? Alice questioned not even knowing where to start. You can cook the bacon, I will show you how and then you can take over. He said while heating the grease and laying out strips of the meat and ignoring the grease that would splash onto his hand as if he couldn't even feel it. Watching him for a few minutes she felt she could make the bacon and took over while enjoying giving something her focus without it being stressful or related to quests or fighting. Good job Miss Alice, after you make another 60 strips we can move on to making the eggs and plating the food for everyone to enjoy. I am sure Miss Yumi will be overjoyed to know you helped cook her food, he said giving her some honest praise for her work. Having completed their task of making breakfast Alice was happy to know she did something productive like a normal person for once. Walking through the halls with the food she helped to make she set Yumi's plate down next to her own and waited for Yumi to finally wake up and join them Shadow, you should get Yumi to come have breakfast with me. Alice said using her telepathy it would be just as fast if you did it you know. Little Shadow said, stretching and rolling off the bed lazily before reluctantly making his way into Yumi's room to force her out of bed. If he had to be up Yumi may as well be up with him wake up Yumi, little shadow said loudly while laying on top of her face making it hard for her to breath. Gah, Yumi gasped, trying to breath and pushing shadow off her. What? Gives you little shit, why lay on my face like that? Yumi asked while getting out of bed Alice said to get you to have breakfast with her and that was the quickest way since you like to sleep so much. Little shadow said while curling up on her bed almost mocking her for not being able to lay down anymore. Like you're one to speak you lazy house cat. Yumi replied before walking out of the room and making her way to the dining room to have breakfast with Alice. Sitting next to Alice she was happy to finally be able to feel like things were somewhat returning to normal with her. The food looks good, I wonder how long the people my father employs will stay on now. Yumi asked with a sad expression. Miss, Alice helped us prepare and cook the food this morning, and you do not have to worry about us leaving you miss Yumi. Your father left us all enough money to work for the next 10 years. Even if he had not left us the money we would all stay here if you wished us to. The cook said while bringing the rest of the cook staff in to eat with the girls so they wouldn't feel too lonely with the absence of Erida. Thank you all so much. Yumi replied, wiping a tear from her eye before digging into the food Alice helped make, not wanting to miss the opportunity. Hello, girls, do you mind if I join you all? King Mark said surprising them. Of course. Yumi said as the king took the spot he would normally sit in when he would come for visits next to Erida's chair. I have made all of the preparations for Erida to be put to rest in the royal crypt. Erida was a great man and has done more for this kingdom than I have so it is only right he has a place worthy of his final resting place. We will hold a funeral for him in a few hours, Erida has left everything to you Yumi so please let me know if there is ever anything you need help with. Mark said before eating some bacon and eggs. Nodding her head she continued to eat in silence thinking of how she wished the war would have never happened. Alice, I do not think I can go on adventures with you anymore. Yumi said sadly. I understand. Alice started to reply. I have to take my father's place and make sure his legacy does not end with him. Please stay with me. I wish I could stay here forever. I do not think that will be possible though. Alice replied causing Yumi to get up and leave the room. Don't. Take it too hard Miss Alice, she sees you as family and probably does not wish to see another family member leave her so soon. Mark replied, finishing his food. I will send someone to come get you and Yumi when it is time for the funeral. The king said while taking his leave. 60 Mother S Day Special. Entering NYX's home Alice walked around admiring all of the decorations and paintings on the walls waiting on NYX to return from her trip to see June and Sauron. Seeing a painting of herself in her new dress she got from the ring and her wings expanded out Alice couldn't help but admire how different she looked from the memories she had of herself as an angel. I really am the complete opposite of what I used to be, Alice said while touching the painting. Do you like it? I had it done the day after I gave you the Shadow Monarch's ring. 
NYX said with a smile walking over and giving Alice a hug, who, painted it? Alice asked curiously, wanting to thank the painter for making her look so good in the painting. Believe, it or not it was June he picked up painting a few hundred years ago and is quite talented when it comes to things like this. NYX replied, taking Alice's hand and making her follow her into the dining room. Did, you make some food or something? Alice asked curiously why they would be in the dining room in the middle of the night. I, love sweets and now that I finally get to be with my daughter I thought we could enjoy some together? NYX said, pulling a seat out and motioning for Alice to sit with an excited expression. That, sounds great, why did you wait so long to be with me anyway? Alice asked while NYX clapped her hands signaling her servants to bring in the trays of sweets. It, was all because of your father, but he doesn't matter anymore. Oh that is right I have a present for you that I think you will enjoy, NYX said, running over to one of the doors and opening it to show Erida standing on the other side. Erida, Alice said, pushing her chair back and running over to him hugging him tightly. I am sure you are curious but I asked Ozia to let Erida come back, he just cannot go back to the mortal world so he will stay here as one of my servants. You can come back at any time to see him, NYX said happy Alice enjoyed her present. How, is Yumi doing? Erida asked calmly while rubbing Alice's head gently. She, is a mess without you, NYX would it be possible for me to bring Yumi here? Alice asked, realizing she may be able to give Yumi her father back in a way. It, is not allowed unless she has my blessing which makes things hard since she cannot use my element and is not one of my followers. However if you can convince her to take me as her god of worship I will allow her to come here a few times a year. NYX replied honestly while pulling a seat out for Erida to join them. That will be the first thing I do when I get back to the mortal world? Erida what is wrong you do not seem too talkative? Alice asked curiously, noticing how quiet Erida was dot shaking his head and looking at NYX she answered Alice's question, he was just brought back today, he won't be his full self until a few days to make sure his soul fully returns. He needs to rest, you should go to your room and get some sleep Erida if you wish to talk more with Alice next time she returns. Thank you so much for this New York mom. If I would have known I would have tried to get you something to repay the kindness. Alice said, moving from her seat to sit next to NYX. Hearing, you call me mom and sitting next to me is all the thanks I need, I made this cake myself I hope you enjoy it. NYX said, cutting Alice a slice and putting it on her plate. Taking a bite of the chocolate cake Alice's eyes shot open, it's delicious? She thought while taking another bite feeling like all the stress and sadness she had been feeling had completely vanished while sitting with her mom and eating treats. I'm, happy to see you enjoy it, it makes a mom really happy when their child is as happy as you look right now, NYX said, placing her hand on Alice's head and running her fingers through her hair, the, cake is really good and this is the first time in what feels like forever that I feel relaxed, unfortunately I need to get back, Yumi will be waking up soon and I don't want her to freak out when she sees I am not home, Alice said, giving NYX a tight hug before going back to the Astala estate how was your visit with NYX? Little Shadow asked, lying comfortably on the bed. It was really good, I got to see Erida and I can bring Yumi to see him if she takes NYX as her god the next time I go. I am sure that Yumi will be so happy she won't be able to wait to take mom as her god. Alice replied lying next to Little Shadow while petting his soft fur I hope she is happy to hear the good news, she has been really sad lately. When did you start referring to NYX as mom? Shadow questioned noticing the change. Tonight. I guess, even if she really isn't my birth mother and has been deceiving me like Sauron she still treats me like a daughter and I am sure the mother I remember would be happy to know I have someone who treats me like a daughter even after her death. Alice replied, closing her eyes to get some sleep. 61 Funeral of a Fallen Hero Having gotten some rest before the funeral Alice went to Yumi's room to talk with her about her time at NYX's home and all the things that she learned. Knock knock Yumi are you there? Alice said from the other side of the door. Opening the door, Yumi motioned for Alice to come in while going to lay on her bed, clearly depressed. I have something to tell you, and I think it might make you feel better. Alice said, sitting on the bed next to her. There is not much you can say that will make me feel better right now, Alice. Yumi replied, pulling her pillow close to her. I think this might. I went to go see NYX when King Mark left, and I learned of a why you can still see your father. Alice said placing a hand on Yumi's arm trying to get her to turn over. My, dad is dead, how could I possibly see him again? NYX cannot bring back the dead from what I know, Yumi said softly. NYX, asked a favor of Ozia and your father now lives with NYX in the realm of the gods. 
I just got done seeing him not too long ago, there is a way for you to see him still. NYX said that you will be able to come with me to her domain to see him if you take her as your god and worship her. Alice happily da turning over and sitting up Yumi looked at Alice in the eyes, you are not just trying to make me feel better are you? How soon can I see my father if I take her as my god? Yumi asked, wanting to believe Alice's words. I do not know how soon you would be able to go with me to see him but I promise you will get to even if I have to make my mother mad and bring you there without permission. Alice said while grabbing Yumi's hand. Fine. I will no longer pray to the god I served and will pray to NYX from now on. Yumi said hoping that nothing bad would happen from just changing gods like this. Miss. Yumi, it is time for your father's funeral. I was sent to come get you girls. A knight in white armor said while standing in the doorway thank you we will meet you downstairs in a moment. Yumi replied while closing her door on him. I will let you get ready and meet you at the gates. Alice said leaving Yumi's room and joining the knight as he walked down the stairs. I saw what you did on the battlefield and I would like to thank you for leading us to victory. The knight said to Alice as they got to the carriage outside of the estate. I wouldn't thank me just yet. I imagine when the demon king Kira hears about this he will come for me. Alice said, wondering if word had already reached Kira about her wings and her killing two of his men. Then, I guess for tomorrow's festival you should have as much fun as you can while you still can. He replied, opening the carriage door for Alice as Yumi joined them wearing a black dress that hung just above the floor as she walked out riding in the carriage both Alice and Yumi looked out the windows and watched as the people they passed by would all wave and show respect to them before they entered the castle gates which had knights lined up along the path. As they turned a corner they could see many of the people that Arida had done business with for many years as well as old friends that Yumi had recognized from her childhood. Seeing all of this tears ran down her cheeks. I'm here for you. Remember you will still get to see him again just be strong okay? Alice said as the carriage came to a stop and the knight that brought them here opened the door. Looking around Alice was amazed to see such a grand entrance to the crypt, it was made from stone and had carvings off all the previous kings and the heroes of the past. We have all gathered here today to say goodbye to a friend and a father that we all hold dear to us. Erida has impacted the lives of everyone that lives in this kingdom and has contributed greatly. He is a hero that many will remember for generations to come as well as my oldest friend. I felt it was only right that this be his place of eternal rest and as such I would like everyone to bear witness to Erida the hero. King Mark said as a drape hanging over part of the stone wall fell to the ground showing Erida carved into the stone smiling. The sight of their old friend smiling and being given such an honor brought tears to many of the people there as King Mark motioned for Yumi to join him on the platform to say a few words. Many of you already know of his daughter Yumi. She is his successor and would like to say a few words for everyone. Mark said while putting a hand on her shoulder and stepping down letting her have all the attention. Looking down at everyone Yumi wiped a tear away, my father always loved it here. He was a really great businessman and always did his best to help anyone who needed it. I do not believe he would want us all to cry for him right now, if he was here he would tell me what he always would when we would talk in his study. Yumi there will be a day when you encounter great tragedy, it is a fact of life that no one can escape. You need to stay strong and keep your head held high in those trying times, you cannot overcome anything if you allow the bad times to triumph over you. I believe this is one of those times, and as he would tell me we need to hold our heads high and not let this slow us down. My father may no longer be here but it will not be the last time I see him, Yumi said, wiping a tear away and stepping down taking comfort in knowing she would still be able to see her father again. Standing next to Alice again the crypt opened and six knights carried the casket with Erida in it out from behind a wall and music began to play as the slowly made their way in. As everyone knows Erida loved festivals and we have a great reason to hold one. So tomorrow we will have a festival honoring the fallen hero Erida and the new people's hero Alice, I hope that all of you here will do your best to help the festival be a success. For now you may all go into the crypt and say your final goodbyes to Erida. King Mark said before taking some of the knights and other businessmen and leaving. I'm going to see NYX, I will be back soon okay? Alice said to Yumi as she was walking towards the crypt giving a nod to Alice. Walking into a shower and exiting in the walkway next to the painting of her Alice looked around to see if she could see NYX or Erida. Mom where are you? She yelled out. What? Brings you back so soon? Isn't Erida's funeral today? NYX asked, walking down the stairs. It is, I wanted to know if I could bring Yumi to see her father today since she agreed to take you as her god. Alice asked hopefully. I will allow it but she cannot be here for long. She will have 10 minutes and not a second longer, 
I cannot allow the other gods to know I let a mortal come to my domain and go back to their realm. NYX relied after thinking for a second. Thank you so much, Alice replied with a big smile. I will come get you and your friend later tonight when I have time. Erida still is not completely ready. Are you sure your friend can handle that? NYX asked. I will let her know before you come for us so she doesn't freak out or anything. Alice said, giving NYX a hug before leaving her domain and coming back out of the shadows next to Yumi. NYX agreed to come get us tonight so you can have some time with your father. Alice whispered to Yumi as they waited in line to say their goodbyes to Erida. 62 A Unexpected Turn of Events Waiting around in Erida's study Yumi took a few deep breaths nervously to see her father and to actually meet a god in person. I pray to you NYX, please come soon I am going crazy in anticipation of getting to see my father again. I would also like to thank you for giving me this opportunity and giving me such a gift. Yumi prayed silently to herself in hopes NYX would hear her and come faster. You do not have to be so nervous, your father is alive and still adjusting to being brought back to life. Alice said while taking a seat next to her. I know, I will also be meeting a god in person. I don't know if there has ever been a time where someone other than one of the god's apostles were able to meet their god. What if she doesn't like me and never lets me see him again? Yumi asked, starting to panic. Don't worry, I promise that will not happen. Alice said, taking her hand to help calm her down. Suddenly the study went completely dark and Yumi could no longer see anything. Alice, are you doing this? Yumi asked trying her best not to panic any more than she already was. Fear. Not child I am just bringing you safely to the realm of the gods. NYX said, pulling them out of the void and into the dining room where Erida was patiently waiting near the doors. Seeing her father Yumi ran past NYX and gave him a tight hug. I miss you so much. I miss you as well my daughter. Erida struggled to say since he was still not completely ready to have a conversation with anyone. Daddy. What is wrong? Why do you seem like you're in pain? Yumi asked in a worried voice. Erida has just been brought back to life and is still not ready to hold much of a conversation but Alice insisted that you see him as soon as possible. NYX replied, taking a seat at the table motioning for Erida to sit as well. Taking a seat next to her father Yumi felt her heart almost stop as she realized she had not even greeted NYX yet let alone acknowledged her existence. Seeing what was worrying Yumi written all over her face NYX spoke up. Do not worry about not paying me proper respects you are my daughter's closest friend and you are able to see the father you thought was gone forever not long ago. I will let it slide this time but I expect you to treat me as your god still, you would do well to remember that in the future. Nodding her head slowly Yumi scooted her chair back and got on her knees and bowed before NYX unsure what exactly she should do next. You do not have to bow before me, a simple hello and thank you will be enough. NYX said. Wondering just what the people in the mortal realm thought it was they should do when meeting a god. Thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart I swear I will worship you until the day I die. Yumi said before getting up and sitting quietly next to Erida. So, Alice I hear that the kingdom which you live in will be holding a festival to honor you and Erida. How does it feel to be a hero? NYX asked with a smile proud her daughter was already gaining the support of the mortals. It feels wrong in a way. I lost my temper and I brutally killed the demons without a second thought, so many more people deserve to be honored than I do. Alice said, trying to resist the temptation to take a slice of cake sitting close to her on the table. Just take a slice and stop eyeballing it. It is food for your belly not your eyes Alice, the same goes for you and your father Yumi. Eat as much as you want and enjoy the time you have with your father. You only have a few more minutes before I have to send you back. NYX said leaning back in her chair not needing to hear it a second time Alice and Yumi both grabbed some of the sweets on the table and enjoyed the heavenly taste. Will my father be able to talk more next time I am able to see him? Yumi asked, trying not to look at NYX directly not knowing if it was allowed. Yeah, I swear I will send you back right now if you do not look at me when you speak to me. Do I need to pay a visit to the mortal world and correct some of these notions you seem to have on how to treat a god? NYX said under her breath. Look. I brought you here as my daughter's friend not as a follower, yes you should show me respect but you do not need to be so scared in front of me, you will treat me as you would a queen you are close with nothing more, NYX said, leaning closer to Yumi to look her in the eyes, yes, ma'am, I mean you're high, what should I address you as, Yumi asked, feeling like her heart was about to burst out of her chest, I, have a name, call me NYX like everyone else in the world, now try to relax and spend some time with your father. Alice come with me, I wish to talk with you about some things, 
Nodding her head Alice happily followed NYX into a surprisingly well-lit room. What do you want to talk about mom? I started thinking while talking with Yumi that I want to attend the festival, after all my daughter is the one being honored. I want to be there for you, NYX said, taking a seat on a sofa in the middle of the room. Can a god do that? Alice asked curiously, wondering just how much of a shock it would be to everyone there. I cannot interfere with another god's creation, I can however come see my daughter in the mortal realm. Do you not want me to come? NYX questioned. I would love it if you came, but I don't know how the people will react when they see you. Alice replied honestly. Well, I have decided that I will be going. I know you have the ability to freely talk with the king if you wish. Just give him a notice I will be making an appearance and everything will be fine. NYX said with a smile. I will be sure to do that when we get back home. Alice said trying to think of just how Mark will react with this kind of news. His kingdom is about to make history and it will be during a festival. Well, it is about time I sent you and Yumi back, I will let you know when Yumi can come back. I have established a connection with her since she has prayed to me so I will be able to tell her as well. NYX said, snapping her fingers and instantly transporting the two girls back to the estate. Thank you so much Alice. What did you and NYX talk about? Yumi asked clearly in a significantly better mood than she was before. Ah, well let's go see the king I will tell you both at the same time. Alice said not wanting to be alone when she tells the king that a god will be showing up to the festival tomorrow underscore 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 and at the castle both Alice and Yumi walked casually into the war room which was being used by many of the business people to finish up planning the festival for tomorrow. What brings you girls here at this time of night? King Mark said, walking over to greet them. Well, I think it would be better if we talked alone. Alice said with a smile. Do you all mind giving me and the girls a moment alone? The king asked, clearing out the room with his question. So what is it you need to tell me away from the ears of others? King Mark asked curiously. I was just with NYX and well she informed me she wishes to come to the festival to see me tomorrow. Alice said quickly, trying to avoid any interruptions when he heard what she had just said. Tha, this is a joke right? A goddess plans to come to our realm to participate in our festival? The king said trying to keep his cool believing she was just trying to lighten the mood to tell him something bad. It isn't a joke. NYX will be coming tomorrow. Alice said seeing his face go from a nice tan to almost completely white. Hearing what Alice said he slowly walked over to the wall and took a seat in case he passed out from shock. You mean to tell NYX herself will be here in my kingdom tomorrow? Yes she asked me to inform you so you could plan it out. I am sure it will cause quite the scene when she shows up. Alice said not even realizing Yumi was also stunned into being speechless. How the hell am I supposed to plan for a goddess visit in less than a day? The king shouted in a panic causing the door to crash open with all the business people crashing onto the floor. We gotta go, good luck, Alice said, taking Yumi's hand and taking her through the shadows back to the estate. 63 Festival of a Hero PT1 Alice wake up, you can't be late for your own freaking festival, Yumi said while busting through her bedroom door, annoyed since the festival had just started and she was still laying in bed sleeping like nothing was going on, mmmn, Alice rolled over away from her not wanting to leave the level of comfort she has achieved, give me a little more time please, like hell, Yumi said, pulling Alice off the bed by her feet to force her to get up, whyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyy
It wouldn't hurt anything to show the people, everyone here accepts you so don't be scared. Yumi said in a voice just loud enough for Alice to hear sensing her hesitation at showing her wings again. I guess I will meet you again at the castle, Alice said, taking her wings out causing the people to cheer even more. Flapping them hard she took to the sky above them staying low enough for everyone to see her as she looked at the sight below her, the streets were crowded and food stalls and games set up at the edges of the streets. Flying slowly to the castle Alice felt a large presence coming her way, stopping in her tracks she turned around to see a small army of demons coming on large flying beasts. The people turning to see why she stopped all started to panic at the sight causing people to start running in fear at the sight. Knights, to your posts? The same commander from the war yelled out from below her as the streets started to clear and festivities came to a complete halt. Taking her scythe out and infusing it with a large amount of the light element the demons slowed down at the blinding sight. Before Alice was even able to charge at the demons to help defend the kingdom a deafening boom sounded as the ground as far as Alice could see turned so black it looked like the kingdom was floating. Return now little ones, this kingdom has the blessing of receiving me to this festival. NYX's voice could be heard from every direction as the skies began to turn black as well eliminating almost all of the light from the area. We only wish to speak with Alice, we know you cannot do anything to us. The demon riding on a wyvern shouted while slowly flying closer to Alice. You believe I can do nothing to you? Care to see just what I can do little boy? NYX said, sucking all of the blackness from the sky and ground into one spot in front of him and stepping out with a smirk. Seeing the goddess NYX appear in their realm the demon fell back on his mount and couldn't speak due to the sheer force of the murderous intent NYX was showing him. What do you think happens to mortals who defy a god in their presence? I cannot directly interfere with mortals but nothing is stopping me from sending you to the other side of this realm. Maybe if you pray hard enough to Samar he will be able to wake up from his slumber and retaliate. NYX said with a grin walking on the air closer to him. Retreat? He yelled in a panic, flying away as fast as he could leaving his group with no care what would happen to them. Don't. Worry baby girl as long as I am here nothing will happen but you need to make preparations for when I leave. NYX said now standing next to Alice who was still frozen from the amount of pressure NYX put out. Th thank you. Alice said, taking a moment to see if her heart was still beating. Those bastards put a stop to such a lovely festival. NYX said looking down at the empty streets of the kingdom. Hear me mortals, come and enjoy this festival. I am the goddess NYX while I am here no harm will befall any of you so party to your little heart's content. NYX said, magnifying her voice for the whole kingdom to hear. Are you sure this is okay? Alice asked not knowing how the other gods would react to NYX's stunt just now. No, one among the lower and middle gods will dare oppose me, as far as the higher gods are concerned I have already told them of my trip to support my daughter. They will not care as long as I do not kill anyone since it has been forbidden by the Supreme. NYX replied as she floated down to the ground with Alice beside her. The Supreme? Alice asked curiously. The Supreme is the god of all gods even saying his name in the mortal realm is forbidden. He is the original, he is a fierce man. Long ago when it was just the gods and the primitive races, we gods waged war on each other for the rights to be recognized by the Supreme. This war almost destroyed this planet and left no living creatures behind. All that was left were the gods waking from his slumber the Supreme was furious and imprisoned us for 10,000 years while he rebuilt this planet from the beginning. Once our punishment was over he left us God's rules to follow and limited our power. The only way for a God to rank up now is by having followers, the more who worship us the more power we have. Sauron however no longer has a race and will likely never recover the power he once had which is why he is such a bitter man. Which is why you're so special I might add. You were born between two gods and thus were not given such a restriction. You may one day be more powerful than I am, you're an existence that every God knows about which is dangerous for you. NYX said as they landed on the ground which was slowly filling back up with people. I have read so many books on gods and that was never mentioned. Alice said just trying to imagine how powerful the Supreme was. It is only known by the gods and is not allowed to be known by mortals, so keep this a secret. If mortals learn of the existence of the Supreme then this world may very well be wiped from existence. NYX replied, back to the festivities, take me to meet the king would you? NYX said with a smile paying no attention to the people bowing their heads as she walked by them. Walking through the streets towards the castle gates Alice felt a little uncomfortable seeing so many people bow and not even try to look at them. It was such a drastic change from when she left the estate moments ago. Coming up to the gates NYX looked slightly annoyed seeing people dressed in black robes with the symbol of her religion. 
do me a favor, when we get closer to those guys just say that I do not wish to speak right now they will hear me speak later. NYX said not wanting to talk with them. Sure. Alice replied not understanding why she wouldn't want to talk with her believers, doing so would likely boost their morale and make them work harder. Walking past them Alice was surprised she didn't even have to say anything, they just kept their heads down and let them pass without even a word. The king is the man standing on top of the balcony up there, Alice said, pointing at King Mark who noticed and started sweating. Snapping her fingers King Mark was transporting next to Alice and NYX through the shadows. Nice to meet you King Mark. I hope you have been treating my daughter nicely, NYX said with a smile. 64 Festival of a Hero PT2. Come on now, you're a king you should be able to speak can you not? NYX questioned waving a hand in front of Ming Mark's face who was having a mental breakdown overhearing NYX call Alice her daughter. Mom we should give him some time. It would shock anyone to hear a god call someone they know their child in front of them. Alice said, feeling a little sorry for the king. Wait, I am fine now. Sorry that was just a lot to take in. I have tried my best to help your daughter in any way she has needed. She is not fond of asking for help though but your daughter is my kingdom's hero now. We are honored to have you join us. If there is anything I can do to make your visit more enjoyable please let me know. King Mark replied while regaining his composure. No need, just have your festival. I am only here to support my baby girl after all and I do not wish to take her day away from her. NYX said putting her arm around Alice and walking away to take part in all the games being held at the festival. Underscore 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 in Lord Kira's throne room underscore 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 Lord Kira we have returned. The demon who was confronted by NYX said kneeling with his head down. This is much earlier than I expected, have you brought me the girl? Kira asked, expecting good news. We encountered a problem beyond our capabilities to handle my lord. Jasper replied, keeping his head down fearful that if he looked up his head would be sent flying. I assume you know what comes next if your reasoning is not something that surprises me, just what could keep 30 elite demon knights away? Lord Kira asked, growing more annoyed by the second. The others and I were stopped in our tracks by the goddess NYX. She has made an appearance in the mortal realm and seems to have a relationship with the girl you want. Jasper replied confident his answer would come his lord. You expect me to believe a fucking god came to our realm? Just how much of a fool do you take me for? Lord Kira screamed in a rage now standing above Jasper who was using every second he had to pray to his god. Your majesty I swear it on my life. Jasper said, shaking in fear. Leaning down Kira whispered in Jasper's ear, next time someone makes an excuse for their failure I hope they can come up with something better than a blatant lie. You can even Jasper began to talk before seeing Kira's hand grabbing his heart inches away from his face. Pulling Jasper's heart back through his body Lord Kira stepped over Jasper's dead body, guards clean this mess up, I think it is about time I paid a visit to Samaria. Underscore 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 on as many of you know we are holding this festival to honor our fallen loved ones as well as our new hero Alice. King Mark said standing on his balcony signaling Alice to step up beside him as the people having fun at the festival gathered around to hear what the king had to say and cheer when they saw Alice stand next to him. Alice, has proven herself on the battlefield fighting alongside all of you brave warriors here today, it is with great honor and pride that I bestow the title of Duke to Miss Alice, I wish that each and everyone here will bear witness to the coming of our new hero and will support her the best you can in the things she needs help with, the king said waving to the crowd of people and nudging Alice to the center to say a few words of her own to the people who looked up to her as their savior. Looking at the king trying not to panic she saw NYX at the back near a window smiling and mouthing, Give the people what they want I am proud of you, I I fought a war that was caused in part due to me, I do not think I am worthy of such praise and honor, however I will always do my best to protect this kingdom and the people in it, I have made friends here and even found family among some of you here today, Alice said with her head spinning from so much attention being given to her dot seeing the crowd go quiet after her saying the only thing she could think of she took a step back before a man in the crowd yelled out, you saved my life. You may not think what you have done is noble and praiseworthy but without you we would not have a kingdom to call home today. 
Alice 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 the people started cheering, making her confused while NYX stepped up with her and gave her a small hug. The people only see the things you have done on the battlefield, they do not care for why the war had started. You may not know it but you already have people regarding you as an untouchable existence in their eyes not too much different than a god. Make the people here love you even more, fly and give them more of a reason to celebrate. Even if it is short lived right now everyone here feels safe and happy and that is because of you. NYX said, kissing her cheek and leaving the festival to go back to the realm of the gods. Hearing her mother's words Alice took out her wings and took to the sky above the crowd taking comfort in feeling the wind pass by her as the cheers from below slowly got quieter until she could no longer hear them anymore. Looking down Alice still couldn't accept that she was now a duke holding political power on top of having the people think she was some sort of hero that worked to save them. Alice, I have something to show you, can you come to the estate? Little Shadow asked excitedly. Sure? Alice said curious what had Little Shadow acting so out of character that flying quickly above the kingdom she ignored the people cheering again as they watched her fly by over them until she had reached the estate and landed by the front door. Gah, put some clothes on you damn pervert, since when was the staff here so lewd? Alice yelled seeing a tall man with long black hair standing naked at the stairway across the room. It's me Alice, isn't this amazing? He replied excitedly, looking at himself and walking up to Alice. Get. Any closer and I will send you to hell creep, Alice said, walking over to a chair and grabbing a blanket that Yumi had left laying on it at the man. Now, cover up and go back to work, Alice said now in a sour mood. Do, you really not know it is me? I am Little Shadow, he replied proudly. Like, hell you are Little Shadow? He is adorable and a lazy house cat, not some naked creep, Alice replied. Shadow, get out here and take this creep somewhere else? Alice yelled out knowing Little Shadow would always come when she asked. I am right here, NYX paid me a visit and gave me a human body. She said it was a present for always supporting you. Little Shadow said a little sad that Alice was not as excited as he wanted. NYX, what? Alice said, calming down thinking that this was something her mother might actually do. If you're lying to me I really will kill you. Alice said, calming down believe me now, Little Shadow said, using telepathy to speak with Alice. Yeah, Alice said, not even trying to hide how shocked she was at the turn of events. Let's go have fun at the festival? I have been wanting to go have fun for a while but couldn't go as what you call a lazy house cat. Shadow replied teasingly, wrapping the blanket around his waist and trying to walk out of the estate. Wait a minute damn it, you cannot go outside in just a freaking blanket are you crazy? Alice said, taking his hand and taking Shadow into Erida's room to let him put on some clothes. Coming out of Erida's room wearing a white silk shirt and leather pants Shadow smirked and gave a goofy pose, do I look spiffy? PFT. Alice stopped herself from laughing before, okay let's go have fun. Alice said now, feeling like she was just going to a normal festival after Shadow unknowingly made her feel better. What? Would you like to try first now that you have a human body? Alice asked curiously. Seeing Alice walking with a man she had never seen before coming out of her home Yumi ran up to them, who is this Alice? Why were you in the house with a stranger? Yumi, now I can get payback. Shadow said, picking Yumi up and petting her head. Alice, help, who the fuck is this? Yumi cried out. That is little Shadow haha <laughs> NYX gave him a human body it seems. Alice replied laughing a little at the situation. Let go please I am sorry. Yumi yelled out before giving up and just letting little Shadow carry her around the streets like a little girl. I hate you so much right now. But you used to do this to me all the time did you not? Shadow curiously asked not seeing anything strange about what he was doing. Let her down now Shadow, now that I think of it we can't just call you little Shadow now that you have a human body. What should we name him Yumi? Alice asked, thinking about how weird it would be if someone heard them calling him little Shadow all the time. I'm too mad at him to help right now, Yumi replied, still upset about being carried around like that. What do you think about Shade? Alice asked both Yumi and Shadow curiously. 65 Power of Belief Having had their fun at the festival Yumi, Alice, and Shade headed back to the estate where they were met by the people Alice noticed near the castle gates when NYX showed up. Seeing the group approaching the estate a man pulled his hood off revealing his long ears and grey hair. Miss Alice, it is a great honor to meet you. My name is Xion, may I please have a moment of your time? Xion said bowing his head before looking up at her. We. We'll see you in a bit Alice just yell if you need help. Yumi said, taking Shade's hand and walking past the group into her home. Looking back at Xion Alice sighed, what is it you guys want to talk about? 
My mom didn't want to talk with you. We wish to speak with you because you are NYX's daughter. You have brought a goddess into the mortal realm which is a blessing to all of us to have been able to see her in person. I wish to thank you for such an occasion and to invite you to see our church where you will be honored and be given our worship so that you may obtain the power of your belief in you, Xi'an said before bowing again. I can see why mom didn't feel like talking to these guys. Alice thought to herself before deciding to turn them down. I'm sorry I really quest, go to the church with Xi'an reward, power of belief please reconsider Miss Alice, we only wish to help you and worship you and NYX together as the mother and daughter, this will give the church much more reputation with everything that has happened today. I swear to NYX that you will not regret coming with us, Xi'an pleaded with Alice, I, will go. Alice replied after seeing the system give her the quest to do so, that, is great news, please follow me, it is not far from here. Xi'an said excitedly dot nodding and following Xi'an and the other followers she was a little surprised to see a part of the kingdom she had never been to before. She was able to see tall buildings with the symbols of various gods on them. Looking further up the hill Alice was able to see exactly which building they were going to. They headed to a very large building which was made from black marble bearing a large symbol on the front where numerous of NYX's followers gathered waiting for Xi'an to return. Seeing Alice next to Xi'an the group waiting out front of the chapel all took their hoods off and ran over to greet Alice. Stop acting like children. Xi'an yelled out at them as they asked various questions to Alice without hesitation. Maybe, I should go back home. Alice said, a little nervous from all the attention she was getting. I am sorry for the others, they are just excited to be able to see such a person as yourself please forgive them and give us another chance. Xi'an said bowing again causing the others to do the same. Fine. Just no more of the questions. Alice said, feeling a little creeped out by them. Walking quietly, they entered the chapel where a giant stone statue of NYX was placed at the back, surrounded by pillars and pews. Miss Alice, I do not want to waste any more of your time here. Would you mind standing on the platform in front of NYX's statue? We wish only to offer you our prayers and worship you. After this, we will never bother you again. We would just like to ask you to come and visit if you ever have the chance. We are not bad people but we know of no other way to help you than to do this. Xi'an said honestly while pointing at the platform Mom please save me. Alice thought to herself while walking over and standing on the platform and facing them don't be afraid of them Alice, this is a very important stepping stone in your life right now so just endure it. I will be watching over you from here. NYX replied to Alice who was shocked to hear NYX respond telepathically. Looking back at the followers who had seemed to understand NYX had spoken with Alice just now Xi'an made his way next to Alice and began to speak. Today marks a day not to be forgotten by history. Today we offer up our praise and worship to a new goddess, one that has protected the very kingdom we reside in and have all witnessed with our own eyes. Her name is Alice daughter of the night. Offer her your loyalty and your prayers and let us welcome this new goddess into the world right here and right now, Xi'an said before stepping away and getting on his knees and praying to her along with all of the other followers in the chapel this couldn't be any weirder. Alice thought again not wanting to make them angry quest, complete reward, power of belief seeing the quest complete Alice almost covered her ears as the voices of the followers praying with unwavering belief became clear in her head letting her hear every word. Wait stop, Alice yelled stumbling on the platform a little as her wings forcefully came out and began devouring all the light around her. Stop! Alice yelled out with such power she sent some of the followers flying back as she was no longer able to bear with the voices in her head and changes she could feel happening in her body. Evolution successful, Demi Angel backslash U003E Demi God All Stats plus 100 All Stats plus 5 per believer title, Daughter of the Night Ability, Dead of Night, allows user to suck all light from the surrounding area. Barely able to read over the system's messages she fell to her knees on the floor as the power continued to rush inside her before finally passing out on the floor. Underscore 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 of you to wake up, you have been asleep for almost a whole day, NYX said sitting next to her on the bed. Why am I here? Alice questioned noticing she was in the realm of the gods again. I came to get you after you passed out, the good news is that you are now officially a demigod and can freely come to this realm and interact with the gods here. You do not have to hide yourself here anymore. NYX said happily, giving Alice a hug. Demi. God? What does that even mean? Alice questioned remembering the system messages she saw before losing consciousness. 4. 
Now it means that you can come and go between the two realms as you please and you can obtain a small amount of power from having people worship you. After a certain point you will ascend to full godhood and will have a following of your own in the mortal realm. I have already lost around 30 followers to you, which would normally make me a little upset but I am overjoyed they pledged their loyalty to you, NYX said, handing Alice some water. I feel way more powerful than I ever have, is this because of my new followers? Alice asked curiously. In a small part yes, you're only a demigod right now so the power you receive from believers is only a fraction of what a god receives so don't go making any enemies up here, NYX said, letting out her full power to show Alice just how much power she really lacked compared to a god. Feeling the power NYX had just released Alice felt like she could see the end of the world if NYX truly got mad. Thank you for giving little Shadow a human body, he had a lot of fun the other night, Alice said, trying to change the subject. Of course, he will be one of your greatest friends in the mortal world so I thought I should give him a present. It is about time you go back, Yumi has prayed to me constantly since the other day trying to get me to bring you back. You managed to cause quite the scene when you unleashed your demigod power in the chapel. What? Do you mean? Alice asked curiously how she could have even let out enough power for someone to take notice of. You managed to let out the full force of your mana when you screamed for everyone to stop, the whole kingdom was able to tell something had happened. Anyways just go back and see for yourself. Also you should know that Lord Kira is on his way to the kingdom so try to prepare and remember you can still die. NYX said snapping her fingers and sending Alice back to the estate where Yumi was ready. What? In the WMHMNNMN Yumi began to yell at Alice getting stopped mid-sentence by Shade who shoved a biscuit in her mouth. Welcome. Back Alice? Shade said running over showing off the new clothes Yumi had taken him to get while she was away. Sorry for making you worry Yumi but we need to go see the king right now, the demon lord Kira is on his way here right now, Alice said, hurrying out of the door to go see the king to warn him. 66 Blood Oath You mean to tell me that NYX warned you the demon king Kira has set out for our kingdom? King Mark questioned trying his best not to panic hearing the news. Yes, I plan to go and confront Kira on my own. The best thing you can do is prepare the kingdom for the worst case scenario. I will be leaving shortly. I have gotten quite a bit stronger since my last encounter with the demons. Alice said looking at her status. Name, Alice class, demigod title, hunter, apprentice of NYX, sorceress, war maiden, daughter of the knight HP, 2,310-2,310 MP, 5,650-5,650 level 36 STR, 470, plus 10 plus 100, VIT, 400 plus 5 int, 688, plus 5 plus 200, dex, 495, plus 10 plus 5, def, 350, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10 plus 100, AGI, 445, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, zero skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by god, passive, demonic gaze, god's eye, passive, shadow eye, passive, hunter's sight, passive, wings of sorrow, dead of night. Power of belief, plus 150. To all stats, 30 believers, plus 5 per believer, it is true that you are much more powerful than I could have ever imagined, but are you sure you do not want any help? King Mark asked. I, am sure. Thank you so much for looking after me while I lived here, I promise to come back and visit. Alice said before turning to leave the war room. Why, do you speak as if you do not plan to return? King Mark questioned, fearing Alice planned on going with the demon King Kira. I, will come back but I do have things I need to do in the demon kingdom if I plan to break free from Kira. Tell Yumi I will be back soon, Shade already knows to look after her. Alice said, using the shadows to leave the castle and head in the direction of the demon kingdom. Alice, anything but that? King Mark yelled out not wanting to deal with Yumi breaking down or getting pissed off at the news he now had to give her duck coming out of the shadows in the trees outside of the kingdom Alice took her wings out and took to the sky with more speed than she thought was possible at this rate I will meet the demons before they even get close to Samaria. Alice thought to herself as the trees below quickly passed as she flew over them are you sure this is what you want to do Alice? NYX said speaking to her with telepathy. I. I'm scared of what will happen but I do not want anything to happen to the people in Samaria, I couldn't bear to see them suffer because of me. Alice replied, picking up more speed you should have still taken a little more time to prepare, even as strong as you are right now you cannot defeat Kira. You can barely fight with the demon known as Kale with your current strength. NYX replied, sounding a little worried. I, have a plan. There is a faction that supports the angel's return, 
If I can convince them to believe in me I will gain enough power to fight with Kira and free myself of the demons who want to chase after me. Alice said confidently it will not be that easy, you would need around 120 more believers before you could fight equally with the demon Lord Kira. NYX replied, trying to convince Alice to not be so reckless. That is probably true, but I can't just let the demons destroy the place I have called home. Alice replied before flying higher into the sky through the clouds and into the light of the moon as she picked up more speed to see how fast she could really go. Flapping her wings as hard as she could, Alice flew at a speed twice as fast as Kale's familiar. Looking down, she was able to see lots of light in the woods. Found you. Flying down quickly, she dove through the trees, opening her wings again at the last second, stopping her just above the ground in front of Lord Kira. I see the rumor of you having wings was not a lie, Kira said trying to hold back the fact she took him off guard. I do have wings, and you have broken our promise. Alice replied showing she wouldn't back down. If only you were a son rather than a daughter, your bravery would be second to none little girl. Lord Kira replied with a small chuckle in his voice. One of your men killed someone I care for greatly, our deal is off. Alice replied while releasing the pressure of her mana causing most of the demons behind Kira to struggle to stand. If you want to have a pissing contest you will lose. Kira replied, releasing his own pressure causing his men to take a knee and Alice to have to concentrate to stay standing. I do not know where you got your wings from but the sheer volume of your mana proves you are my child. Now come back with me and I will take a blood oath to never set foot in that kingdom you are so fond of. Lord Kira said, holding out a hand for her to take. Me, Lord? She is clearly an angel? One of the men standing close by said standing up again. Another. Word from you and you will no longer have a head. What angel have you ever seen with wings so black? This is a blessing on my child from the dark god, Kira said, showing more mercy to his men than he normally would. I will go if the same applies to your men, the blood oath must include you sending people to that kingdom, Alice said, putting away her wings as a show of good faith. So, be it, but you must swear to call me father, Lord Kira said with a smile. Hearing his words Alice fought to keep her anger in check keeping her mind on the goal she set for herself. Fine. I will call you father from now on, I swear in front of the gods with my blood, Alice said, pulling Scythe out and cutting the tip of her finger waiting on Kira to say his end. Good, girl, I swear in front of the gods to never set foot nor send any of my men to the kingdom of Samaria, Lord Kira said, biting his finger causing it to bleed as they placed their fingers on each other's forehead. We are heading back home, men. We will throw a feast with the return of my daughter and heir to the kingdom? Lord Kira shouted while placing his hand on Alice's back, time for you to take your rightful place, you will learn to love this kingdom as you love Samaria. When Samaria is under my control I will let you rule it for yourself as a present. Remember your promise oh well father, Alice said, fighting the urge to puke as she said the words. So I hear that you have a close relationship with a goddess. How did you manage such a great feat? Lord Kira asked as they quietly walked through the woods back towards the demon kingdom. I simply prayed and she answered, she has made me her apostle, do not even think of asking me to change to your god, I will leave through the void and disappear from this world, Alice said strongly to show her absolute loyalty to her mother, I wouldn't dream of it, I wish to meet with this goddess, nyx I believe she was called, Lord Kira said without emotion as they walked I refuse to meet that bastard, nyx yelled unintentionally ouch, you do not have to yell, I already know you don't, I wouldn't let you anyway, Alice yelled back through telepathy, I will ask her the next time I speak with her for you since you have been so kind. Alice said, trying to get past the disgust she felt being nice to Kira. This has gone much smoother than I had expected, but know this. If you are planning something behind my back I will find a way to wipe Samaria from existence. Lord Kira said with a grin as they approached the outer walls of his kingdom. Welcome to my kingdom Alice. Kira said as they came out of the tree line and she was able to see the castle on top of the mountain in the distance. Looking up Alice was speechless to see the kingdom's walls to be almost three times higher than the walls of Samaria. Passing through the outer gates she was shocked, the buildings were not at all what she had expected. Instead of being red and black like she had thought of them, they were normal and very well built with brick. The streets were alive with business and people living happily. This is not what you were expecting was it? Lord Kira said, waving at the citizens who praised his return.